We are tonight's entertainment. What the fuck is this, Chet? Mm-hmm. This is a tasty burger. Were you rushing or were you dragging? You like Huey Lewis in the news? Is this your homework, Larry? Why just be you beans? Welcome back to the film to the scoop. film scoop. We've got a special episode this week. Yeah, I hope this you got is, some time on your hands, because this one's going to be hefty. This is the first annual Scoopies. Yep. You're witnessing history in the making. History in the making. You're going to tell your kids about this day. Yeah. You were there to witness the first ever Scoopies. You've got Oppenheimer making the nuclear bomb, and then us doing the Scoopies. Yeah. As You've far got as like changing of the world. Motor vehicles being created. Penicillin. Penicillin. This podcast. Chocolate peanuts and then <laughs> the Scoopies being created. Yeah. Those are like the four most impactful moments in human history. Yeah. And you're witnessing one of them right now. So we're going to get into that, all the Scoopies hijinks in a little bit. But first we got to do our, our normal episode. We got to talk about our watch list. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's pretty much it because we don't have like a topic for this week. Not yeah. Like a big release or anything. Oh, uh, I also... My... 2023 movies i actually did the list not on notes on my phone but on letterbox for real so it's an actual list yep i for some reason carl used to get defensive when (laughs) he would make a list for the podcast he would make some kind of list and i'd see him in his notes like typing out the name of every movie in his notes and i was like you know it's a lot easier like on letterbox to do a list because you can reorder them like you just add it to the list once and then you can move them around and like see them all and instead of having to like delete the line and retype it on another line like it's a lot easier and he's like i like it like this <laughs> and for some reason he never he thought i was being a dick for like telling him to do it on letterbox I still but haven't, it's just faster i still haven't figured out how to drag them to different locations it like gives me when i click on a movie it'll be like position in the list and then i'll have to punch in like position number 24 and then it'll move it up to 24 i mean i can it's really easy i can show you how to do it well you also tell me how to do stuff that's like a paid subscription thing. there's no way that that moving stuff in a list <laughs> i'm not is, saying it is, is patriot but you'll like you'll be like yeah you fucking idiot just clone the list and then i'll go over and it'll say clone okay, like i didn't say pro. you're i didn't say, call you an idiot and then i'll be like oh it's a pro thing and you go that sucks you just keep going. I don't know what's a pro thing. Like I, I just, I just have my shit. I just know what just, works. I just yeah, know what I have. You should do this, you moron. I can't do that. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. You're gay. <laughs> That's what I get. <laughs> um, yeah. So we'll talk about our watch list, and then we'll pretty much get straight into the scoopies. Um. First up, we've got Four Christmases. It's been two weeks since we recorded. I was going to say, like... It's been a long time. It was before uh, Christmas. We're definitely... There's a gap here. (laughs) Yeah. uh, It took a while. We took a week off. Not off, but we took a week to prepare for the Scoopies. We had some movies we missed that we needed to watch that we thought would be on the list. Um, And we may have been right. And uh, uh, and we just needed some time to like pick our categories, get our nominees together, and you know shit like that. So yeah, that plus the holidays kind of threw our whole schedule. Yeah, and out. the holidays was super busy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's been it's been a while since we last recorded. But um, for Christmases, I gave it a three and a half. I still enjoy it a lot. I think it's really funny, and. That's all I really want from it. It's a yeah. comedy. It takes place on Christmas. Got Vince Vaughn in it. He takes the trips. Yeah. That's what else do you Yeah. What else could you want in the world? <laughs> I wouldn't say my name used to be asshole, but now it's Bob. I just say my name's <laughs> my Bob. My name's Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, four Christmases is really funny. Yeah. Uh, next day we watched the night before. Another classic, just dude. Never gets worse. Every time I watch it, it's just as fun. Yeah, it's so fucking funny. I love the characters. Um, Seth Rogen's really f- his shtick. Sometimes in other movies can get old. Yeah, not in sure. this movie. No, like this everything one... he does in the night before. Because <laughs> I, so <laughs> I got the reefers. Because I got the reefers. You got 
one joint. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they, they keep making these like jokes about how he's Jewish and how like uh, how like Jewish people killed Jesus and how he's yeah. like we didn't do it and like <laughs> and then like later in the movie like something happens where he gets framed for like uh killing the messiah like the football messiah and he's yeah. like it's happening again and it's so fucking funny dude fuck michael you, shane baby. <laughs> fuck you baby cunt, cunt. <laughs> yeah. yeah nice dick bro <laughs> <laughs> i guess that settles it <laughs> That was so um, good. If you guys haven't seen the out before, <coughs> just fucking watch it. Yeah. It's incredibly funny. Uh, Michael Shannon as Mr. Green. Oh, dude. You gotta be in the present. <laughs> put <laughs> that your, could be oregano. Put your tiny hand in mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real party. You ever see me as, think of me as a father figure? <laughs> no. <laughs> not at all. Didn't hurt my feelings, not really. <laughs> It's not my car. <laughs> um, yeah, I gave that a four star. I love it. Then we watched The Iron Claw, which we haven't spoken about yet, because it's been two weeks since we recorded. But uh, it's one of my favorites of the year. Yeah, The Iron Claw, I mean, it might come up again later on. May or may not it come was, up later during the Scoopies. It was phenomenal. I um, avoided the trailers for the Iron Claw. I knew the general idea. I knew it was about a wrestling family. And uh, it had Zac Efron and Jeremy Allen White in it. And I said, I'm good. Yeah. I'll, I'll see it. I'm, I'm ready. I'm excited. I don't want to know anything about it. So every time it was painful, because every time we'd go see a movie, I'd hear Don't Fear the Reaper come on and like see a, a, a quick clip of like Zac Efron running. Yeah, and I was like, I I wish I was watching that trailer right now, but I yeah. really don't want to know what what happens in it. I don't. Yeah. I want to go in as blind as possible, and that really paid off for me because I didn't know what to expect. I I generally knew it was going to be sad. Yeah, but that was about it. And like, so the reveals really like got me, and yeah. I didn't see them coming. And I didn't research before the. I didn't research the real family or anything, so. Uh, I think it's one of the best of the year. Some of the best performances. For sure. Um, I mean, Zac Efron, uh, absolutely fucking yoked. Dude. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking ridiculous That how big he got. You know, people were making fun of him with that haircut for the movie. And, like, I'm looking at him like, I'd, I'd still fuck I'd him. fuck him. I'd yeah. still fuck him, dude. I'd let him... With that Lord yes. Farquaad hair, like yeah. I'd be like, yeah, come on, yeah, um, <coughs> yeah, he's he's incredible in the movie, and uh, fuck anybody who makes fun of him for the way he looks now. Uh, you're a piece of shit, and he's hotter than you, so fuck off. <laughs> yeah. You're gay. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> the only person that can make fun of him is like Ryan Gosling. Yeah, Ryan Gosling, Brad, Brad Pitt. Pitt, maybe. Yeah, so. there's like five people on Earth that can like say proudly. I'm more attractive than Zac Efron. Yeah. So we're not any of anyone listening to the film scoop. Isn't one of those people. <laughs> yeah. So fuck off. You're gay. That's what, <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. Um, yeah. yeah, I think I've seen it twice now, uh, the iron claw and it was just as good the second time. I've got no idea why we, why we did that to ourselves the yeah. second time. I enjoy pain. I enjoy <laughs> inflicting crazy. maximum damage upon myself. Yeah. I watched the trailer of the iron claw and I'm happy to report that the trailer just the first trailer. I don't know if they did multiple trailers, but it was very good about getting the point across and not revealing much. Mm, like that's cool. you understand that there's a wrestling family. There's kind of some kind of toxic dynamic that goes on with the dad and tragedy strikes. Yeah. That's all, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> the, um, the writing's great. I, it's a very immersive setting. It mm -hmm. takes place in the eighties in Texas and, just from the the um, soundtrack and the accents and everything, the way everyone's dressed, it's just really immersive. And it, it flies by. Like, the way it's... I want to say one of my praises of the movie is the editing, but also, like, one of the things holding it back from being a five-star is also the editing. 
because I think it's edited in a way where things move really fast. Yeah. So that keeps it very fresh <coughs> and it keeps you from getting bored and it moves on to things really quick. Um, but that can also like kind of skip over some things that should have gotten more time. Yeah. Like the, not going to go into spoilers, but like the first incident, family incident, yeah. <clears throat> they, pr- they move on from that pretty quick. Yeah. And like go on to the next thing. And I feel like the, an Iron Claw movie that was three hours long would have been a five star and like been much better. Yeah. It's a four and a half for me. It's, it's, you know, it's in my top five of the year. I love it. But I think that the biggest like negative about it is it it can gloss over some things sometimes that I wish could have gotten more, uh, more time to really like sink in. Yeah, I agree with that. I also, <clears throat> like I understand having to, you know, hit something and then move on to the next thing because there's a lot of stuff to cover. And also, I'm sure like to them, it felt like it all happened at once. And that's mm-hmm. kind of how you feel as an audience member is like, dude, this shit is crazy. Yeah. Like, like the world's collapsing around us right yeah. now. I also <laughs> feel like kind of a nitpick. I also feel like they didn't do a great job having the audience understand how big the Von Eriks were. Like how much of a phenomenon they were. Yeah. It kind of feels like the whole movie, they're superstars like in Texas. It feels like they're Texas superstars, mm-hmm. and they have like this family, uh, like arena that they wrestle at every weekend. But in reality, they were national, like worldwide superstars in wrestling. Yeah, and like everyone knew them. And uh, I feel like they didn't do a great <clears throat> job until he until they fight Ric Flair, which like, you know, an audience member can say, "Oh, they must have been a big deal if they were fighting Ric Flair," but it feels like they go from. Just being like Texas stars to, to Rick Flair. fighting Ric Flair, yeah, and uh, I, I I just think that maybe could have been done a little bit better to like uh, display the gravity of like how how much of an impact they actually had and how big they were, yeah, at the time. Um, but yeah, it's one of my favorites of the year. It makes me cry. I love Zac Efron. Yeah, that's, he fucking killed it, dude. We'll we'll leave it there. Um, <clears throat> Merry Christmas, Drake and Josh. <laughs> Need I say more? The double feature of, of <laughs> yeah. a lifetime, the perfect crime. Well, when you when you watch a movie that makes you want to jump off a bridge, you got to balance it out with something happy. Yeah. Merry Christmas, Drake and Josh. Uh, I watch it every year. It's we, you know, the scoopers out there, the hardcore scoopers, listen to our Christmas episode, and they know how I feel about this movie. It was in my top five. Yeah. Uh, I still have it at a four and a half. Yeah. If Fleeb isn't in your vocabulary, then get out of here. If you don't like Merry Christmas, Drake and Josh, then you can go Fleeb yourself. (laughs) That's all I've got to say. Um, (laughs) Fleeb. Um... (laughs) Like a, it's what, like Honeydew when he was when Crazy Steve yeah, was putting was his Honeydew. hand on that bald guy's head. Yeah. Oh my god, I want to touch it. <laughs> it's so soft. I love the way glass sounds when you knock on it. <laughs> Dude, what a weird line to yeah. throw in there. Uh, it's just really funny. I grew up with it. It takes me back, makes me feel like a kid again, and I just think the comedy still really works. So. You know? Hey. Oh, like, <laughs> there's just little is. things that, like, I just appreciate. Like, there's, in the op- in, like the first ten minutes, they're at a Christmas party. And it cuts to Drake talking to Crazy Steve. And the scene starts by Drake going, I don't know. I don't know. And then Crazy Steve's just going, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. And then he's like, I don't know, Cheddar. And then you... <laughs> and that's like... And then someone comes in and starts talking. And, like, that was... <laughs> that, that was the beginning of the scene was crazy Steve begging Drake to at, to tell him his favorite cheese. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> Cheddar. Well, like with no setup either. It was yeah. just like, 
the very the scene start starts of. with them in the middle of that conversation. <laughs> I just find that so funny. Yeah, um, I liked Crazy Steve measuring the corn dogs. Yeah, that was yeah, that's, sick. That's that's, that's that's a good, good setup for Crazy yeah. Steve. Um, Bludge, you know, there's too many, there's too many things to compliment about Merry Christmas, Drake <laughs> and Josh. Just go watch it. Um, Making a hole. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <coughs> kiss, kiss, bang, bang. That was that was on you. It was a solo venture. Um, God, that movie's funny though. It was a. It's like I've seen it before because it's Shane Black. You know, that's my fucking homie. Uh, and I liked it before, but I forgot that it was a Christmas movie. So I watched it on Christmas, like night, like after Christmas, mm-hmm. and it is so fucking funny. Dude, I yeah. love that movie so much. Um, <laughs> he's like, uh, <laughs> Val Kilmer's like, uh, you know, if you look up the word idiot in the dictionary, you know what you'll find? And he goes, a picture of me. And he goes, no, the definition of idiot, what you fucking are. <laughs> yeah, dude. And shit like that. And <laughs> dude, dude. He's, he's going through his car, uh, Robert Downey, he's going through his car, uh, um, what's it called? Glove compartment. And then he yeah. finds a gun. And he's like, oh, my God. And then Valkymer's like, I call that my faggot gun. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I like when they're being interrogated. The torture scene. Yeah. When they're, like, yeah. Uh, shocking his nuts. Yeah. yeah. He's like, you want to fuck me, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're doing this. You get yeah. off on this. Yeah. Just go ahead and fuck me. <laughs> you want to fuck me, don't you? Yeah. And then they're interrogating that guy. And he's got... Uh, <laughs> They're trying to get information out of him, and then Robert Downey's like, "Oh, you want to you want to play tough, huh? All right." And then he does Russian roulette and his gun, and he spins it, and then he's like, "All right," and then he shoots it and yeah. he kills the guy, and then he's like, "What the fuck?" And he's like, "I only put one bullet in there. It was there was like an eight percent chance." And he was like, eight percent? Who taught you math?" <laughs> And then he's God like, damn. but he's leaning on his car and he's like, I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. Yeah. Dude, Shane Black writes some of the funniest dialogue around. It's like, so good. When they first meet, he's 8% like. percent talking you <laughs> When they first meet, he's like, uh, he's like, hey, I'm Gay Perry. And he was like, uh, he, he was like, oh, you're still gay? And he was like, no, the name just stuck. <laughs> The name just stuck. Dude, that oh my fucking God. movie is so funny. Oh, when he's uh when he's putting the girl to bed and she's asleep and there's a there's a spider like on her boob and he tries to flick it off. He goes, "Yuck." <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, fucking sorry, I'm like ruining every joke in the movie, I guess, but it'll still be funny if you watch yeah. it. But there's a scene where he's peeing and then he looks over and he sees a dead body and he turns and starts peeing on it by yeah. accident. And then he calls Val Kilmer and he's like, dude, there's a, f- they fucking put the body in, in my hotel room. And then he was like, okay, just throw it out. And then he was like, um, I peed on it. And he was like, what could possibly possess you to pee on a corpse? <laughs> Dude, Dude, it's so. I love the random like throwaway stuff that Shane Black does with like the yuck. (laughs) Yeah, just just little shit like that. I don't know if he's like writing that or if it's the (laughs) actors, but it like shows. It happens in uh, uh, the Nice Guys too, like just random stuff like that that they'll do. It'll be like Ryan Gosling doing like a second look. It'll be like him doing a double take about something, and it's really funny. But it's like on the script, you can't really like portray that. It just kind of has to happen, but. Yeah, kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Go watch it. Uh, if you like the nice guys, it's like a, it's a less good version of the nice guys, but it's yeah. still really funny and really smart and well made and inventive and it's fucking Shane Black, you know. Yeah. If we're talking about non predator Shane Black, we're talking about a man who doesn't miss. Yeah. If you take out the miss, he never misses. Yeah. So, uh, Iron Claw again. I watched uh, Mutant Mayhem for the third time. Ooh, a cool guy. Hell yeah. Um awesome. Awesome time once again. With the Bev. With, with the, the Bev. Bacon egg and cheese. Bacon, bacon egg and, and cheese. cheese. <laughs> <laughs> um and then we watched Saltburn. Saltburn 
is an event. Something I was worried about based on what people were saying. I thought it would it would be like pretentious and just like boring and uh, just like weird shit for the sake of well, weird I saw, shit. Well, I saw the trailer. The trailer is very uh, vague. It's just kind of like a bunch of random clips from the movie. Like and cool like, visuals that yeah, makes it look but really I was odd. like worst worst case scenario the movie looks great because like the clip of him at the dinner table is in the trailer yeah the mirror uh, yeah the mirror yeah. shot and i was like that is insane mm-hmm. plus i love barry um how does he say his name kogan does he say kogan well i was watching an interview and I jacob said alordi said barry kogan uh, i'm gonna keep calling him kogan because i'm an american but he's like i was like he's a fucking beast i like him in everything he's in mm-hmm so, I'm gonna can watch you believe? It. Sorry to uh, interrupt you and get off topic, but can you believe there's people that don't like him cast as Joker? I, I do. Like because he's one of the most interesting and exciting young <clears throat> actors we have, and you're getting him to play Joker in I, in a bat in a Matt Reeves Batman universe. What is not to like about that? Well, Cash, this might come as a surprise to you, but. I've encountered quite a bit of stupid people in my time. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I'm i not going to say sense. any names, but I was also encountered someone who was upset that Jeremy Allen White was cast in the Iron Claw because he's not 6'8", like fucking Carrie yeah. was in real life. Yeah. I'm sorry that I don't have a fucking freak of nature. I'm sorry we can't cast Dave Batista in every role. <laughs> yeah. But... Like, uh, we need, we need three Dave Batistas to do yeah. the the Von Erichs. Yeah. The fuck is wrong with you, dude? Yeah. It's Jeremy Allen White, and he's going to do a good job. Yeah. Yeah, let's just cast Dave Batista, the guy with the deep voice from The Witch, and fucking uh, Jacob Elordi. Yeah. Because they're the only people tall enough to yeah. play the Von Erichs. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking grow up, all right? Yeah. It is you know, kind of funny, like, just... It is funny reading Carrie Von Erich's height and then Jeremy Allen White's height. But, like, that's not an actual, like, problem or negative with yeah. the movie. Like, he's playing a character. It, it is funny to compare them, though, because they're about a foot apart. Yeah. Like, they're... It's, Jeremy it's Allen White's 5'7", and per, and uh, Carrie was 6'5". Yeah, that's... 10 inches apart. That's really funny. But anyways... Um, but, yeah, so I get I get people that don't like Barry as Joker because, so I mean, they're dumb. Stupid. Yeah. Like, the dumb people exist. I think it's just because people want, like... They want to see a live-action version of, like, the Mark Hamill comic Joker. No, dude. And I just don't... I just don't really think that'll work very well. Well, there's... Like, they did that in a, in a Batman short film. I can't remember what it's called, but it's, like, straight out of the comics Joker, and he talks just like him and looks just like him, and I just don't think it really works in live-action. I think it it's better to kind of do something different with it. I think that... <laughs> Like, there's probably some nostalgia attached to, like, how the Joker's been portrayed for a long time. Honestly, I think Jack Nicholson did an excellent job of capturing that in the Tim Burton movies. But, like, now we've gotten Heath Ledger as Joker. And it's better than what's been, what Joker has been portrayed. Mm -hmm. So I want that now. Like, I want this new thing. I know it's not how he's been portrayed for a long time, but... I like the darker, crazier Joker. So, like, I don't feel a desire to see the classical, more traditional Joker on screen anymore. I just don't get it, because that, that deleted scene, like, it felt so much like Batman and Joker. Yeah. If, like, the dialogue they were saying just feels like Matt Reeves really understands Joker. And I uh, just wish... And, Barry... like, that relationship they have. Yeah. Like, it's it's like they hate each other, but they're also, like... They kind of have a friendship. Yeah. It's weird. It's a very interesting dynamic, but I, I don't know what's not to like about it, because Barry's fucking sick. Oh, it's because Barry didn't offer to give him a reach around. Oh! That's why. Yeah. And molest kids. Oh, he, <laughs> he didn't send Margot Robbie a dead mouse, so <laughs> yeah. he's not a good joker. He didn't make people care <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't mail someone a used condom, so he's a bad joker. Oh, uh, FYI. That guy fucking sucks. <laughs> If, if you guys are unaware, most of you probably are, but we're talking about Jared Leto. Yeah, Jared he's Leto. A, he's an insane person. Dude, and, give it up. Yeah. Stop, just stop doing what you're he, doing. He fucking sucks. You're being a loser. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> Saltburn. Yeah, Saltburn. Yeah. Back to it. Um, Barry, 
Love Barry. Um, something that you told me that I didn't realize, like it just dawned on me, um, is that his, that's his first lead role. Yeah. Which is crazy. And it's kind of upsetting because I've seen people trash Saltburn because of some pretty traumatic things that happen in the movie. There's some scenes that really <clears throat> can rub you the wrong way. They're pretty gross. Pretty vile stuff that happens. Yeah, grow up. It's a movie. Yeah. But I mean, he's not actually doing that. Skill <laughs> issue, you know. It's not fear factor. Yeah. Like, this is made up. Yeah. <laughs> this is... That's Kool Aid. They're pretending. Yeah. <laughs> like this. They're like, playing dress up. All yeah. right. Fucking calm. Kiefer down. Sutherland isn't a real vampire. That's just <laughs> that's the Lost Boys. Tim Allen isn't Santa Claus, dude. Fucking <laughs> be an adult here. Buffalo Bill doesn't really have a well. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't I I went into it very uh, cautious because people said it sucked. I was like, it could be some pretentious like nothing burger, and it slapped yeah slapped hard um i basically my experience with it was uh i was nervous about it but once i turned it on like the first couple scenes just like really drew me in and i just thought it was interesting yeah. like i didn't really i'm not a person who predicts where movies are going that's just not how my brain works i try to experience a movie and take it in i don't try to think ahead because if i do that then i'm not paying attention to the movie if I'm li- if I'm thinking in my head like, uh, I wonder like why this character is doing this and blah blah blah, then I'm like not paying attention to what's happening on screen. I just take everything in and I yeah. don't really think ahead. Um, so I didn't really know where it was going, but I just thought it was really interesting. I yeah. just thought what was happening. I thought the performances were great. I loved the cinematography, and we were like an hour and a half in. You had to like get a drink or piss or something, and we paused it. And you were like, what do you think so far? And I was like, it's just really fucking interesting. That's yeah. the only word I could use was like, I'm just having a great time. I don't yeah. want this to end. Like, I'm, I'm just enjoying watching this right now. And um, having seen like the whole film, I just think it's really fucking cool. Yeah. I, I, th- I think it kind of like blends <clears throat> tones really well too. It's dark. There's fucked up shit that happens, but there's also really funny shit that happens. Yeah. And the cinematography is great. It has like, I guess I can't, I can't really get into the ending. I don't want to spoil it, but I was thinking about it today and the ending actually reminded me of Perfect Blue where it's oh. the ending's kind of dark, but it plays a really upbeat song during it and it yeah. gives you a really weird feeling Yeah, when you're hearing like a happy upbeat song. But there's something kind of sinister happening on screen, and it's like, it's a really interesting thing to do. And I just, I don't know, I don't know yeah. if anyone else thought about that, but I didn't, I didn't. Like I, I got the, I get the vibe that you're talking about because like, a bad thing happened, but it's played off as like a victory, which is, yeah, a, which is weird. Yeah. But I didn't make the perfect blue connection because that that happens in perfect blue. Yeah. Uh, my biggest problem with Saltburn was that I thought that the twist in the movie was over-explained, and I think it would have been more interesting if they would have just left some breadcrumbs for the audience to like decide what they thought happened um, instead of like spoon-feeding it to you. Um, but that's about it. Like That's about the only problem <clears throat> I had. Um, I thought it was really fucking cool, really interesting. I liked the music. I've been listening to the music like oh. for a couple of days now. Yeah. I think I put on Murder on the Dance Floor every morning. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I got to start my day out like this. Yeah. Uh, the MGMT song, uh, Time to Pretend, oh. by the way. Yep. There yeah. You go. Come on. Let's, <laughs> let's think about the title. Saying of that. it without saying it. Yeah. You know? I love when that happens in yeah. movies. Like in The Killer, when. Uh, his girlfriend's in a coma and they play girlfriend in a coma by the Smiths. <laughs> <laughs> Killed it. Or he's putting his hand in a glove and they play yeah. hand in glove by the Smiths. That's fucking awesome. You know, they were like, uh, what song do we play for this? And they search girlfriend in coma songs. <laughs> and that's the first thing that pops up. Like, yep. Fits. Um, I didn't yeah. know the actual title of the Smith songs, but that's, yeah. that's hilarious. Yeah. 
That's so funny. Um, yeah, I just think Saltburn's really fun, really interesting. Uh, I regret not seeing it in theaters. I wanted to. It was just kind of like it came out during a busy time. It came out over the holidays, and yeah. we just didn't get to it. But yeah, I I fucked with it yeah. for sure. Hell yeah. Uh, what else? What else do we got on here? Oh, one of my favorite jokes in Saltburn was when they're at a dinner table, and then uh, they say, "Oh, are the Henrys coming?" And then Barry goes, "Who's the Henrys?" And then. Uh, they go she goes oh they're dad's friends they're all named henry <laughs> yeah. and like i just thought that line was so fucking funny he's like they're not all named henry most of them are named henry <laughs> <laughs> because when you hear like the henrys you think like that's their last name and it's yeah. like a family so like, they're all named henry i don't know i just thought that was so fucking funny. i really liked um the very beginning the ask me a sum I'm a genius. Ask me a yeah. song. He's you like, know what kind of train this is? He's like, it's not like I don't believe you. He goes, then fuck, ask me a song. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. With uh, Eye Patch guy from House of the Dragon. Yeah, dude. Shout out to him. Um, yeah, I gave Saul Burn a four. Uh, I dust him in a lap guy was in it. Oh, yeah. Archie something. Crushed it. Uh, Rosamund Pike, you know, the whole gang. Yep. Pretty awesome. Pretty Pretty cool movie. Next day, we watched May December, which I wasn't a fan of. Me either. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Fucking it up on us? Yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, that fucking blue ass. I don't, know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, dude. I, I, I was waiting. For, <laughs> I kept waiting for something to happen, and then the movie just fucking ends. <laughs> so, uh, I... I wouldn't describe it as blowing ass. I didn't no, hate I'm, it that I'm, much. I'm overplaying it. Oh, okay. I'm overplaying it for, for um, yokes. I thought it started out really interesting, but it didn't really go where I wanted it to go. And I just feel like it's the movie's a little unfocused in what it's trying to say. And uh, uh, like towards the second half, I just started kind of losing interest. And... I think the performances are great, especially Charles Melton. I think he's the best out of all of them. And he's, like, the reason I think the movie's even decent. Kind yeah, of. I... um That character in general. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. It started out with a really cool idea of what was happening. Stuff that happens in real life. Like, actors studying for their roles, and they go and talk to the real-life person and talk to their family and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, Making a movie about that is interesting. And yeah, I that's just, a really cool, like, fresh thing to do. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I, you know, I'm on board. And then they keep doing that, and they keep doing that. I just thought it was kind of pretentious. I, I don't like using that word because I, I don't know. I feel like it can be, people don't use it properly a lot of the time. But to me, it, it kind of did yeah. feel like that. It's like Charles you're, you're is, kind of making a movie about the dangers of like uh making movies and shows about real stories and real people but you're making a movie about real stories and real people yeah like that they didn't make up this story in may december that's oh, a real thing that's a real person oh shoot I didn't yeah know that. the kid like joe i don't <clears throat> know if i don't think it's his real name i don't think it's his name in real life but like he's still alive like the old the uh gracie or whatever her name is like she died but the kid is still alive. Oh, dang. So it's like you're trying to like critique that whole thing while doing it. Yeah. So it's like you're not really smart if you're critiquing something and actively doing it at the same time. I don't know. I don't think it's – I just didn't really take much away from it. Yeah. Except it, for Charles Melton's performance. I yeah. really liked him in the movie. I was really on board at the beginning and then like – Nothing really happened, and then I became pretty attached to Charles's character, Joe, and the kind of spiral that he'd started going down. Mm -hmm. And then it just stops before like anything meaningful it seemed happened. Yeah. And like at the very end, there's something that's said to another character, and I like looked over at you, and I was like, "Did I miss something? We, like, why was, was that, that a reveal? I was like, like why was that impactful? And yeah. You were like, "Nope, you didn't miss anything," and I was like, "All right." 
and then that's because you did. Over. I think you did snooze for a second. I I closed my eyes, but it was it was actually for like I snored myself awake. So yeah. that happens sometimes where like the second I actually close my eyes, I'll go to sleep and I'll snore and then wake back. That up. happened in Ferrari. Yeah, so I, I, I heard I, Carl snore like he did one snore, and then I looked <laughs> over at him and he woke himself up with yeah. the one snore and he was back awake. And then yeah. I was, and then he he uh, started reclining his chair up, so he was yep. he was less comfortable. Yeah. I had, yeah. to, I had to set up for Ferrari, but yeah, we'll get into that. Dude, later. I don't, I don't understand the hype for May December. Like, I'm the only. I think there's one person on my friends list that has it at a two and a half, like me. Everything else is like fours and fours and a half, and I, I just, I'm not sure what other people are taking from it. What like what they enjoy so much about it, other than the performances. But if you know anything about me, like, the performances aren't enough to for me to like a movie if I think it's boring. <clears throat> the master. Yeah. So, dude, uh, sorry. I've, <clears throat> I've never done heroin before, but the way people act in movies, like they're on heroin is how I imagine watch it. Like that's how it felt watching the master. Just try my best to stay awake and stay alive while something foreign infects my body. Yeah. That's what it's like watching yeah, the master. master but fucking blows. Fuck the master. Don't worry about that. <clears throat> if but you yeah. already know the answer to the question, then why ask pig fuck? <laughs> so I that's like the that. best I scene. Like that line. That's the best scene in the yeah. whole thing. Yeah, I like that line. Pig fuck needs to get talked about. We need about to more. use that more. Yeah. When we disagree on something, we should start <laughs> we should start doing that. Well, if you feel that way, then why'd you say that pig fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but my. yeah, May December kind of um kind of smelly kind of overrated kind of stinky <laughs> get fucking blue ass <laughs> um uh ferrari fucking blue ass <laughs> <laughs> um no, uh, same for me same situation as may december it was not as interesting off rip as may december cuz the setup of what was happening in may december was uh cooler there was more going on um, but it just, it, the more I think about Ferrari, the less I actually like it, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. Yeah. So I love Michael Mann. Prime Michael Mann's one of my favorite filmmakers. I think he has three, five out of five star movies. Um, but honestly, like I even ever since this was announced, I wasn't really excited for it. I was going to watch it cause it's Michael Mann, but I can't say I was excited. Like, it, that's just not a topic that interests me. I'm not a car guy. And specifically not like a... I don't really want to see, like, a character study of, like, a car guy. Yeah. Like, if it's going to be a car movie, make it about the cars, like Ford v. Ferrari or something. Yeah. Like, I can watch that. I can get... I love Ford v. Ferrari. That's yeah. a great movie. It's also hard when the main character... Like, I don't really know a lot about cars. I don't really care much about cars or racing, but... If I'm watching a racing movie, I at least understand the competition. And Ferrari is about Enzo Ferrari, who's not racing at the time. Mm. He's retired from racing. Yeah, so it's not even, like, about the racers. Yeah. It's... Dude, like, I... I I also had Tweedledee and Tweedledum fucking sitting next to me. Yeah, that was a good time. Yeah. In the movie, Ferrari's there. They introduce him. He's Enzo Ferrari. Of Ferrari name. Yep. Makes the Ferrari cars. Mm-hmm. And then there's a truck that comes in, a couple of cars with the Maserati logo, which is a Trident, because we're all we're all people and we know what the Maserati logo is. Mm-hmm. And the couple next to me, the guy, the husband, probably like 42 years old, leans over to his wife and goes, that's Maserati. What a loser. I was like, dude, shut your fucking mouth, dude. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> Get off, and then they kept fucking taking their little popcorn bag and shaking it up. Yeah, I heard to like that. spread out the butter, and he would eat like two popcorns, and then wipe his mouth off with a piece of Velcro. It sounded like oh. it was the loudest napkin He's got in his the world. Sandpaper handkerchief to you know wipe his mouth with. You know, in SpongeBob, when he tells him to play the tissue, play a song with a tissue. Yeah, he did it. <laughs> he fucking did it, dude. Yeah, I was I was hearing those those fellas. Yeah, they, they were quite quite loud. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, they were more interesting than the movie, though, so shout out to them. Yeah. Uh, I genuinely, like, kind of sounds crazy, but I really think, like, Ferrari, in my experience, like, it was a bad movie. I what did not care about anything that was happening. And I wasn't tired. I didn't snooze. Like, I was there. I was ready. I love Michael Mann. I love Adam Driver. I didn't care about anything that was happening. Even the races. They didn't, like, explain what was even happening in the races. Like, when you watch, um, like, Top Gun Maverick, like, the mission and everything and all the characters are, like, laid out perfectly to where during the mission you care about what happens. You care about the characters. You know what's going on. You know why it's important that they accomplish their goal. It's like when the <clears throat> racing scenes were happening in Ferrari, I was like, I don't know who these people are. I don't know the the stakes if they win or lose like i don't really like i don't care what the fuck's happening yeah. and it was really just like a nothing movie to me i'd i went in and watched it and left and i'm never gonna think about it again yeah and what's what's kind of like even more disappointing for me is i actually watched the movie and uh there was a I guess this is a mild spoiler for Ferrari about a movie about racing cars, yeah. but there's a crash that happens. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know the crash I'm talking about. Yeah, the, is it the first one or the, the big one at the end? It's the big one at the end. Mm-hmm. So that had serious... Imp- they don't do that race anymore because of that crash. And there was, there was there's trials and stuff that happened in real life, and I was like, why didn't you do that? Yeah. That would have at least been more interesting than just ending it where it ended. I feel like <clears throat> there's got to be 35 different stories about Ferrari that would have been more interesting than what they chose. Yeah. So, but you could have done something like you could have set up drivers, set up Enzo as being, you know, whatever character you wanted to be. Being the he could have been like the Terrence Fletcher of yeah. Ferrari and so like he's, pushing people way too hard yeah. but like for results yeah the crash happens and then like and you kind of get that a little bit with that them sitting at the table and him talking to the guys but that's the last what quarter of the movie yeah and it's like what the fuck dude then the movie just like ended and I was like oh I guess it's over it says yeah. directed by Michael Mann like I, I didn't <laughs> what was this movie even about like I feel like someone asked me like hey what happens in Ferrari Fucking, I don't know. I'm like, dude, uh, Adam Driver walks around Italy. <laughs> That's what happens, dude. Yeah. yeah. That's the so summary of the movie. So they drive some cars around. <clears throat> fucking, they can't understand anyone because they're all doing Italian accents. Yeah. I don't know. Popetti. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that I got. great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, didn't like Ferrari. Uh, and then last night... For New Year's Eve, while everyone else was out partying, getting plastered mm-hmm, mm-hmm. at bars with their friends, I was by my lonesome watching John Wick 4. Oh, what having a, a blast. Yep. I put it on at like 9.30, 10 o'clock, assuming I would get tired and like turn it off at some point. Not finish it. Didn't happen. <laughs> did not happen i put it into my ps5 so i could put my headset on and like listen to it since it was late at night so i don't have to play it out loud and i can also get it really loud in my headphones Mm -hmm. that movie is fucking awesome yeah i stand by it being the best action movie ever made it's um it's almost like i had this feeling while i was watching the movie that i don't really know how to articulate but Chad Stahowski doesn't give a fuck what anyone thinks. And I feel like a lot of directors, they try to do stuff differently just for the sake of doing it differently. So they're not like uh, giving the audience what the audience wants. Mm -hmm. A lot of directors don't want to give the audience what they want. And they want to like kind of give it to them, but in like a different way. It's like when I'm watching John Wick 4... In my head, I'm like, oh, it'd be cool if they did a shot like this. And then he does it. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, in the Osaka Hotel, when um, those guys, 
like the high table guys come in to Hiroyuki Sonata's like uh, Osaka Continental, and uh, they're like squaring up. They're his side and their side are like about to start fighting, and there's this low shot, like the camera's low to the ground and it's panning over slowly to the right, like at at Hiroyuki Sonata's team's feet. And you see, like, their blades coming down and, like, preparing for battle. And you hear, like, the fucking score ramping up and shit's about to go down. And you, everyone's like, dude, it's, it's like fan fiction almost. Yeah. It's like, it's too obvious for other people to do. It's like, oh, that's cheesy. That's like, uh, oh, that's like melodramatic. Yeah. But it's like, <clears throat> Chats to House, he doesn't give a fuck. And he makes movies for fans. And he gives you exactly what you want. And, uh, like, when they, they first come in and, like, uh, they're about to start fighting and Hiroyuki Sonata, like, cuts out the lights and then the, they all turn green. Yeah. And you see the guys, like, all up on the second floor with arrows pointed at them. Oh, my God, it's so fucking sick. Oh, and he, he goes to his boys uh, when the when the his daughter comes and tells him that the high table people are there. And he says, uh, we have guests be prepared to greet them with, uh, hospitality. Oh yeah. And then they all, you, they you get the sick ass song plan. And then yeah. they open up these like doors to all these, uh, samurai swords and nunchucks and shit. Holy fuck. Yeah. If I could, had to summarize John wick four up in one word, it would be dude. Come fest. Come fest. That's a good one. That's yeah. a good, uh, that's a good, adjective for it uh i was listening i'm I'm about to make that my review i'm just gonna be you're gonna open up the review and it's just gonna say come fest i was watching it last night and today at the gym i was listening to one moment when i heard it like watching the movie i was like holy fucking shit that's like i love that (laughs) score for some reason you're like i gotta get get a pump to this it's the first shot of the osaka continental it's like when they first go to japan and uh, Listen to this. Oh, dude, I do remember that. Yeah, it's That's got like a, it's like a shot of a dog like yeah. going through the like cars outside going into the it's hotel. Nobody's dog. Yeah, it's so fucking cool. That dude. shit slaps. Dude. Holy dick. Yeah, like I'm watching this movie and I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Like the way it looks, everything. It looks better than normal movies, yeah. let alone action movies. This, this is this transcends action. Yeah. This looks better than movies in general. Dude, Keanu on the roof of the Osaka hotel yeah. with the red dude, light. Like, why is there a fucking big red light up God, there? Dude. Who fucking cares? It looks sick. <laughs> that's all that matters. Like That's what I'm saying. Chad Stahowski is like so unpretentious about what he makes. Yeah. He just does shit that he thinks is cool and that he thinks other people will think is cool. And like, I was listening to him talk today. Um, and he was just saying he loves, like he has a reflection fetish and like a light fetish. And in all of his movies, he just likes as many cool lighting scenarios and cool reflections and like, uh, as possible. And some people, you know, may think that that's inauthentic and like, Oh, it, it should, there should be a reason that there's stuff there like it should be natural but it's like he thinks it's cool so he does it yeah and i think it's cool so i just had like scene after scene after scene after scene in john wick 4 i'm like movies should not look this good yeah it's ridiculous how insane it is like set piece after set piece the osaka hotel uh, the green lights and then he goes into the the separate room where there's these, these like big glass boxes for some reason <laughs> i don't know why they're there i don't know what they are who fucking cares it's sick that's where right. the nunchuck scene happens hey Chuck, and then, why are these nunchucks in these this big glass box and he's just eh. <laughs> <laughs> dude yeah and he starts like i mean obviously <clears throat> the action is the best of the franchise of all time the the action choreography is absolutely ridiculous um but that goes without saying. It's like, for me, what makes John Wick 4 so insane is just the pacing. The writing is really good, I think, too. And the characters, like the side characters they introduced. They made an epic. Like, they made a... It feels like a superhero movie. Yeah. Like, you have John Wick, but then you have Hiroyuki Sanada's daughter, Akira. And you have Tracker. 
and yep. uh, Bill Skarsgård, and you have Kane, and it's like, and you have these layered in backstories with all the characters. They're not like meeting for the first time. Yeah, like Hiroyuki Sonata and uh, Kane are all, and John Wick are all like go back, and they're all friends. Yeah, and they they see each other, and they're like, "Is your daughter still good?" And he's like, "Yeah, she's well." And it's like little things like that that just expand the world building and god it's so fucking good and i don't want to spoil john wick 4 if anyone hasn't seen it but what happens at the end is teased throughout the entire movie yeah and i just think it's a perfect ending and i don't want them to make a john wick 5 i know that he's talked about doing it like a little down the road i hope that never happens i don't think you can possibly end the john wick franchise better than what they did they want to do spinoffs. I know they're doing ballerina, and so I think they may want to make like an Akira movie. But I don't want any more John Wicks. Yeah, do I mean, do it, all the spinoffs you want. If they do five, it wouldn't be too bad if they did a prequel of his like um, impossible task that the Russian mob like assigned him. But because then it doesn't really interfere with how it ended. Yeah, but I just it's still revisiting that whole thing. Yeah, but at least with a prequel, it doesn't like. It doesn't disturb yeah. what's happened. Yeah. And there's some fucking lines in John Wick 4 that... Oh, dude. I should have I should have taken notes on them, but... Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's a great yeah. Keanu. <laughs> and, like, Hiroyuki Sonata says, uh, friendship means little when it's convenient. Yeah. Um, uh trying to think of more i don't want to hold it up too long but it's fucking amazing yeah there's the the very end when he's like uh those who push death away find it or those who cling to death live and those Those who who cling cling to life die die. yeah yeah that's fucking awesome that's fire that shit like that happens throughout the entire movie yeah and just like clancy brown saying a man's ambition shouldn't exceed his worth. Yeah. The fuck? <laughs> All right, fucking Marcus Aurelius. Like, it's fucking this cold is as... supposed to be an action movie. Yeah. It's cold <laughs> as shit, though, dude. <laughs> it's fucking cold. Yeah, dude, it's fucking Clancy Brown, awesome. what an imposing looking yeah. guy, dude. He's got the fucked up eye in that, too, yeah. missing the finger. Cool-ass Mr. Krabs voice. Got the fedora on. Yeah. God bless. His name is uh, it's fucking sick, too. Uh, What is it? The uh, I'll look it up. Sorry, I don't know he, if you remember this too. Name. Um, this is kind of a a spoiler for, for John Wick Four a little bit, but he goes into the uh, Continental and he's like, "You have one hour," and he pulls out this enormous ancient yeah. <laughs> sand yeah. glass, uh, the fucking hourglass, yeah, and puts it on his table and leaves. I'm like, "You carried that in, yeah, just to do that." Yeah. You brought a suitcase with for, that in it, with an just hour. for this moment. You could have just told him he had an hour. It was huge. Yeah, it was like it was the size of a mini fridge. Yeah, he pulled it out. I was like, God damn, dude! <laughs> <laughs> they make stopwatches now. Yeah, what the fuck? You have an iPhone. Yeah, just set a timer. He it looked like he got that out of a castle, dude. But that's the cool shit about John Wick Four. It's like John. It's like <laughs> Chad Stahelski like created a genre. Yeah. John Wick, the John Wick movies don't feel like reality. They feel like their own separate world where they take yeah, place. It's like a fantasy with the coins world. that they pay for and the high table and the continental, and just like these rules uh, about the duel and like them meeting and discussing the terms and having these big like nice cards that they like flip over and see who like chooses each each round and like there's all this just layered shit about like oh you can't challenge me unless you're in a house so then he has to go to the russians and like join their house again he has Mm -hmm. to go do this mission for them and like get their crest on his arm like burn the crescent all just the coolest fucking shit yeah i I don't want to ramble about it for two hours but like it is the coolest fucking shit and it's because chad stahelski doesn't care about coming off cheesy yeah he doesn't care about what people would think about it and uh he just does shit that he thinks is cool and it ends up being fucking cool yeah what do you know that's crazy right wolves 
Woos. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was the mark. <laughs> the mark. <laughs> That's Woos. crazy that you remember it like that because I just watched it last night and he says it exactly like that. Yeah, dude. It's so if funny. If you haven't seen it, I fucking killed it just <laughs> now, dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the opening scene, like, uh, Lawrence Fishburne's walking down the alley, like, reading off Dante's Inferno. Yeah. Just fucking sick-ass shit. Yeah. Anyways, I could I could talk about John Wick for forever. We have an episode on it if y'all want to check that out. But we got some uh, some business to tend to. And then I watched two movies last night. I watched John Wick 4 and then I watched The Holdovers because I'm fucking sick. Oh, my God, um, dude. I got to make Logan watch that. Yeah. Another four and a half. Uh, still just as good. The only thing I didn't like was that Paul Hunnam uh, talks during a movie. Oh, yeah. When they're yeah, watching the movie yeah. and he's like, not only is this a good film, but it's also quite... Uh, it's quite historically accurate to the time of the Romans. Oh yeah. And he was like, fuck off. Yeah. And the guy was like, shh. And he was like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, like, All right, Paul, I'm, I'm on your side. 99% of the time. Yeah. But you're in the wrong here, pal. Yeah. You're right. the, asshole. you're the asshole here. All right. Yeah. You should not be talking during the film. That guy was doing the correct thing. Yeah. He was doing his job. Telling you to shut up. Yeah. And you mistreated him. Yeah. So me and Paul, we're gonna have to talk about that. Might but, have to slap him around a little bit. Yeah. Give him the old one, too. I watched a movie last night. Oh, yeah? Yep. I, wa- I lost something once. <laughs> <laughs> I, wa- I watched Psycho Gore Man. Mm. Yep. Yummy. It's been on my watch list for a while. It. I don't even remember how I saw the trailer for it. But I was like, that looks like a lot of fun. Oh, and- why'd you watch that without me? I would have loved to see that. Lo and behold, motherfucker, it was a lot of fun. Oh, really? Yeah. And it was actually pretty funny. No. Oh. Like, uh, obviously not on the same level, but there's some sequences that it's like, I could see that being in a James Gunn movie. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Like, there's some... <laughs> it's like these kids uh, awake a demon and have control over him, but he's like from a he's like an alien from another planet. And these guys are watching them in a spaceship, and they're like, oh, my God, what do we do now? And then some guy goes, stop hogging all the gloobles. Because <laughs> those are for everyone. <laughs> and he grabs them and starts eating them. <laughs> like in the middle of everything. It's like in Guardians 3 when uh, they're talking about Gamora, and Drax is like, she's dead to us. Hey, you want a Zargnut? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, stop hogging all the gloobles. <laughs> Yeah, there's some funny shit in that, and it's just it's just a fun it's a fun okay. like B rate sci fi horror movie, and he's running around like blowing up people's heads, and like the ending's really funny. He's cool. like, "You taught me how to love, and now I'm gonna use that power to destroy the universe," and then just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, maybe I'll check sick. it out. Then. Yeah, yeah, Psycho Goreman, cool PG for short. Curl your toes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that's the end of the watch list. And now we're going to get into the Scoopies. The Scoopies are ceremony, if you will. Let me, uh, give us a nice little introduction to the Scoopy. Let me know, let, let me get you guys on board with what the fuck's about to happen. All right. Oh. Okay. That's what the fuck we're doing here tonight, all right? <laughs> that's what we're, that's what we're all about, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna be wanking. I'm gonna be wanking my cock. <laughs> How are you guys are picturing that guy to look? He looks just like that. <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh. All right. So, <coughs> Carl's got a opening monologue for us. I do. I actually did this out of spite because you mentioned that it might be fun to do, and Logan was like, you should do it. And then you told her neither of us are, are talented enough to do that. I was like, I'm glad I got thrown into that boat. It was just oh, unwilling. Maybe it's just me. Sorry. <laughs> I've just never like sat down and tried to script write jokes. I just feel like I wouldn't be good at it. It's just a, it's just a, an opener. 
Okay. Well, yeah. well, y'all can y'all can let us know <clears throat> how Carl's opening monologue is. Well, now that you frame it like that, they're gonna say it sucked. <laughs> let me let me introduce you like we're on a show. Okay, here we like, go. Like you're Jimmy Kimmel, but like good. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce you. All right. Uh, and in the first annual Scoopies, we have Carl, the Milkman <laughs> Maxwell. I thought you were going to say the idiot man. <laughs> no. Not right now. All right. This is a fun time. <clears throat> All right. It's been another sick year for film. We got to see Killian Murphy completely floors as Oppenheimer. And we got to see Barry Cogan drink cum. So <laughs> W's all around. All around. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't see every movie that came out because we're fucking losers. Yep. But we got the important ones out of the way like... Ant Man three, Mario, <laughs> hell yeah! And uh, shout out to Chris Pratt for his performance in Mario because if you plug your ears, you can barely tell it's him <laughs> playing Mario. A lot of hard work on the accent. Yeah, it's just him talking. Spent hours on the grindstone for that one. <laughs> so we're gonna get into the awards, but before we do, I just want to say that despite what your parents have told you, uh, greatness isn't subjective, and what we say here is completely fact. Yep. So if you disagree. Why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? If you disagree, ear game. <laughs> <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Because I got Doritos. <laughs> Step out. All, All right. right. The Scoopies. Into now, the actual awards here. Now, there are some films we didn't get to this year. So I'm going to go ahead and rip the band-aid off, list off all of the films that I feel like are slightly relevant that we didn't get to. Um, the worst crime of all is that we didn't get to see poor things because that was not our doing. It's not showing in our fucking state. So what do you want me to do? It wasn't shown in any theater? Dude, it wasn't fucking showing. Like, <laughs> I, I, I'd pay Dude. money... I would pay money to like not use Regal Unlimited. I'd go to an AMC and watch it because that's how bad I want to see it. And it's yeah. not fucking around us. So that's we, awesome. Yeah. So poor things. Rebel Moon, Zone of Interest, Society of the Snow, Boy in the Heron, Cobweb, When Evil Lurks, Rye Lane, Scrapper, Fair Play, Priscilla, Infinity Pool, New Hunger Games, Dumb Money, Sanctuary, Maestro, No Hard Feelings, are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, Five Nights at Freddy's, The Marvels, Ghosted, and Flaming Hot. Didn't watch any of those. Yeah. Really disappointing that we didn't uh, get to No Hard Feelings because word on the street is there's a uh, nudie scene. <laughs> I've heard. Yeah. I've get heard to check that. out Jennifer Lawrence's box. Yeah. That's, I mean, I mean, I like men, but I mean, that doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll, I could stomach it. I mean, we you got to balance it out you know we got salt burn when we get to, got yeah, to see you're big right. i'm being selfish yeah we salt burn was for me it can't be all penises yeah <laughs> you gotta have some boobs every yeah really good. so um i just realized that like the first one we have on here is like kind of the big award you want to start from the bottom work our way up. uh yeah yeah we can do that yeah um <clears throat> so we got biggest disappointment and how we're going to do this is we agreed on five nominees, but we picked our own winners. So uh, some of them may align and we'll have the same winner. Some of them may, that may not happen. And we, will we're gonna we might up. have a slight discussion about it. Yeah. I think we'll line up the further up we go. Yeah. So first category of the first annual Scoopies, biggest disappointment. Yeah. Biggest fucking dog shit. Yeah. Um, well, not necessarily. <laughs> no, I yeah, don't know. I know. That's I know. not really what it means. Because uh, there's an award for biggest smelly. And that's not what this biggest is. Biggest smelly. This is. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we need to change it to. Biggest smelly. <laughs> like, <laughs> and for Christmas, is when he says, I'm going to take a grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So <laughs> biggest disappointment. The nominees are Quantumania, The Creator, Napoleon, Ferrari, and Bo is Afraid. Yep. These were all movies that I was looking forward to and ended up liking them significantly less than I expected to. 
Mm-hmm. And my winner for biggest disappointment is Bo is Afraid. Ooh. Because this was Ari Aster coming off of Hereditary and Midsummer. Two movies I think are great. And Bo is Afraid, the trailer looked really cool. It seemed like a like Joaquin Phoenix doing this like anxiety, like uh you know, paranoid schizophrenia type thing. And you don't really get a whole lot of that. Yeah. I, I I didn't really like Bo's Afraid at all, uh, even though I gave it like a two and a half. I don't know. I I didn't really care for it. But the other ones, like Napoleon and Ferrari, personally, I wasn't like super excited about. Oh, okay. I was pretty excited for Bo's Afraid. Yeah, I wasn't super excited about Ferrari. I mean, really, it's like I hear Michael Mann's doing a movie and Adam Driver's in it. And, and I I'm go, like, yeah, I'm hard. Yeah. But it's like, oh, it's about Ferrari. And I'm like, oh. Yeesh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, mine wasn't Bo was Afraid. And I think it's because I don't like Midsummer as much as you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would bo- I'd, I would say borderline not like Midsummer. Mm. But So what you're saying is you're a fucking uh, idiot? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Um but I picked Napoleon, and... I figured you'd pick that. <laughs> My stomach's making crazy noises right now. You got the rumbling and tum. I, I hope it's not picking up on the microphone. It sounds like you I'm... you shit your pants on the microphone. It sounds like I'm shitting my pants, but it's just my stomach. <laughs> but... You know, my picks, calm down over there? <laughs> dude, I don't know what's happening. But my pick's Napoleon, because I was like, this is Ridley Scott doing a period piece on a war general we'll get to see some big wars some fights learn more about napoleon and the movie wound up uh not being really a lot about napoleon and we got like a couple wars and that's it wars with like no setup <clears throat> no setup like, no explanation just jump 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 across everything i know ridley scott said he has a four-hour cut which I'm sure would be more cohesive and there's added stuff that will make things make more sense, but I don't want to see it Yeah. because I'm going to be bored. I, if I was bored during that two and a half hour cut, I'm going to be bored even more so during the four hour cut. Yeah. So I'm not going to watch that. Instead of uh, Napoleon, you know, being a huge tyrant and people kind of like worshiping him or his troops kind of like worshiping him. We got him fighting a mummy and then going, no, 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 Yep. <laughs> so destiny it, brought me to this lamb chop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, really crazy that Joaquin Phoenix is in both of the, like two picks for the he biggest is. disappointment. Yeah. He's the lead of both of our biggest disappointments. Yeah. That's kind of sad. Maybe he needs a, a better, like, agent. I think he needs a little, like he needs some better, you know, he needs to pick better projects. He needs a whooping. He's a little spanking. He's a little spanking. Yeah. What do you do? You think he's gonna get back on track with Joker fully ado? Uh, I think I think that'll be better than these. It'll definitely be better than these. But I wasn't the biggest fan of Joker in the first place. Um, there's people that talk about Joker like it changed the game of like movies. But yeah, I remember when it came <laughs> out, I was pretty big into it. Like, I, I liked it a lot when I first saw it. And then as time went on, I liked it less and less and less. And yeah. it's like, now I don't really have an urge to watch it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just Taxi Driver. Yeah. If I want that kind of movie, I'll just watch Taxi Driver. Exactly. So, if Taxi Driver didn't exist, Joker would probably be a masterpiece. Oh, yeah. But guess what exists? Fucking Taxi Driver. <laughs> yeah. So, <coughs> here we are. Yeah. So... Yeah, I think it'll be better. I'm still excited for Joker 2. Yeah, and I'm I'm excited that it's a musical. I think that that's really bold and really yeah, interesting. I think that's going to be cool. Especially since I think it'll all be hallucinations. So it won't, like, not make sense. Yeah. You know? I think it'll all be in his head. But you still get to see some sick-ass shit. Yeah. Like, in his head. So, yeah, I'm excited for that. But we got, uh, next up, Biggest Surprise. These are mainly things that had bad trailers that we thought would be bad and ended up being good. Uh, so we've got the nominees are <clears throat> Dungeons and Dragons, The Holdovers. That one's not a bad trailer thing. That one just kind of came out of nowhere and we didn't really know what it was. Yeah. Um, Gran Turismo, Transformers Rise of the Beasts, 
and Godzilla minus one. And my winner is Dungeons and Dragons. Ooh, okay. That's partly, it's not the best movie on the list, but it's the best movie in comparison to its trailer. Yeah. It had a dog shit trailer. People <laughs> thought this was going to be horrible. Yeah. Based on the trailer. <clears throat> and it was some of my favorite like comedy of the year. Yeah. I thought it was really funny. I love Chris uh Chris Pine uh Jonathan. Jonathan. Just <laughs> fucking I I want to rewatch Dungeons and Dragons. I've been waiting to I've been looking around for it on Blu-ray. I yeah. think it's I think awesome. Logan would like it. We should rewatch it with her. Yeah. What's your pick? My pick is The Holdovers. Mm. And it was tempting to go with something like Dungeons and Dragons cuz The Holdovers had a good trailer. Mm. But I did not expect to like it anywhere near as much as I did. Like I thought I went to the holdovers expecting like a three, three star. Mm -hmm. And I think I've got it at four and a half. Like I fucking love the whole, and it's going to be in my Christmas rotation for like, yeah, I think with the biggest, uh, with biggest surprise, it was just for me, I tried to pick something that I was actively like thinking I was going to dislike, which like never happened with the holdovers. Like from the second I found out that it existed, I was like, oh, I'll probably like this. So I went with D&D because uh, I don't play Dungeons & Dragons, so I already didn't really care about anything in it. Yeah. Um, and then the trailer was horrible. Uh, posters were horrible. Everything about it looked horrible <laughs> except for the actual movie. Yeah. And it's because it's the fucking directors of Game Night. And intellectuals <coughs> like Game Night. Yeah. So intellectuals like Dungeons and Dragons. Intellectuals know that Game Night's a perfect movie. Yeah. But no, it was a tie between the Holdovers and Gran Turismo, and I was like, "What? Do you, what's like the biggest gap between what I expected and what I got?" But can Paul Hunnam dust him in a lap? Probably, dude. <laughs> you think he can? I think he. Did can. you? Did you see him throw the football? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I see don't him. know if he dust him in a lap. <laughs> Maybe he's not quite the athlete I thought he was. <laughs> Did you see him stretch before he yeah. got in bed? That was crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, those were our biggest surprises. Best animated film. Now, we technically saw four animated films this year. Um, but there's three nominations. There's three nominations. And that's because I refuse to give Mario a positive... Um, nomination. Yeah. So we have three nominations for uh, animated film, best animated film, which is Across the Spider Verse, Suzumi, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem. Mm-hmm. And my winner is actually Across the Spider Verse. This one was hard. It was for close, me, but I went with Across the Spider Verse as well. Okay. <clears throat> and I think that. TMNT tells a more complete story, but I think the stakes of what's going on feels a lot more personal, and then there's a lot more emotion in Across the Spider Verse, and the I animation's think for, better, the score's better. Yeah, for it's, that, uh, it's just like <clears throat> I think I think it just barely nudged out TMNT. Yeah, I I really like TMNT, but on my third watch, I could I don't know. It, I kind of realized that I don't really like the villains in the movie. I really like the movie for the turtles and the animation. Yeah. That's and I something, think it's funny. Yeah. But the villains, <clears throat> Superfly and like all the mutants and uh, my Rudolph's character, it's just like, I don't know. Uh, on third watch, it kind of hit me like, okay, this is kind of, I'm kind of only watching this movie for the turtles. That actually, versus across the Spider Verse is like everything's really well balanced. You yeah. love Miles, but you also really like Miguel and like uh, Hobie and like everyone in the movie. There's no bad character in Across the Spider Verse, so yeah. I'd I'd go with that. That actually hit me in the the second watch that we did mm. for TMNT. It's just I don't know some of the stuff with the villains. I was like, eh, that's not. Yeah, quite like, as cool as I remember it being. Like the first when time. they uh, when they're supposed to be like taking down Superfly, but then they end up b- going bowling with him. Yeah, it's like I guess it's a little funny that like because it's their first like mission and they're kind of bad at it and they're afraid to like confront him, so they just go along with it and start bowling with him. 
but I don't know. It just feels a little unfocused and and then he just turns into a big blob at the end and they because you got to have some big monster to fight. I don't know. It. I still love the movie, but <clears throat> the villains are the weakest part, and I yeah. think Across the Spider Verse has great villains. So agreed. That's the that's the you know tiebreaker. Yeah. So did you pick same thing? Yeah, Across the Spider Verse. All right, and we've got Bro is sick with the pen award, yeah. which it translates to best screenplay. That's street jive. Yeah. <laughs> That's the young people jargon. And uh, uh, Ron Stallworth happens to know both. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've got our nominations are, you want to read them? Yeah. We've okay. got the holder Holdovers, David Hemmingson, Oppenheimer, Christopher Nolan, Anatomy of a Fall, Justine Triette, and Arthur Herrera. Harari? Harari. Harari. Um, Iron Claw, Sean Durkin, and Past Lives, Celine Song. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> My winner is Holdovers, David Hemmingson. Oh, okay. I think out of out of the nominations, the screenplay for the Holdovers is like I think the writing in the Holdovers is what makes it so good. Mm. So compared to the rest, I, th- I just think it's better. Definitely don't hate it. Uh, it's one of my favorite screenplays of the year. But my winner's Oppenheimer by a landslide. It wasn't even... I never even thought about picking anything else. I oh, think, really? Yeah. I think <clears throat> Oppenheimer is easily the best screenplay of the year. Um, I just think that if it was written any differently or any worse by a different writer and director... It, could have been really boring and the way that he wrote it and the style that he wrote it with like the timelines and the way everything like culminates the way he'll he'll play like a score and you're cutting back and forth between like different which i'm assuming it's like that in in the screenplay i don't i'm not i wouldn't say that's like editing it is editing but it's like I'm sure that's how it is in the screenplay, too. Yeah. Um, that's something I still kind of struggle with is kind of isolating to what extent is it the screenplay or is it other elements that have, like, come to make Yeah, because sometimes happen. decisions are made after the fact. Yeah. Sometimes you shoot a scene, like, in the script, it's all linear, but then when you're in the editing room, you're like, oh, this would be better if I, like intercut them together yeah so it's hard to say it's a screenplay but even without that just like the dialogue the pacing everything of the the screenplay i mean there's so many iconic lines already it came out this year and you're the one that gave them the power to destroy themselves yeah and just uh i believe we did yeah i believe we did and um uh zero would be nice you know, yeah. just shit like that like it's just easily the best screenplay of the year to me and you know I, I think Oppenheimer call me crazy may get a, a couple more awards tonight because oh. I just think it's fucking hard dick if I have anything to say about it yeah so that's my uh, bro is sick with the pen is Christopher Nolan heck yeah uh, supporting King Penis Actress you mean read? Uh, I mean, you can, yeah. I was just going to clarify, like... Oh. We here at The Scoop use King Penis as, like, just top dog. Yeah. So not to be, like, uh, derogatory since it's, like, an actress. I, I just wanted to clarify. We're not... It doesn't mean anything, like, you know, just King Penis is, like, a good thing here. We <laughs> say that as a compliment. Yeah. So... King Penis Supporting Actress. That's yeah. that's who we're talking about here. Yeah, yeah. King Penis is just another word for fucking awesome. cool guy. Yeah. Cool person. Yeah. <laughs> Everything I say is just more derogatory <laughs> stuff. I went straight to cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Supporting Actress, we have uh, Divine Joy Randolph, Emily Blunt, Penelope Cruz, Vanessa Kirby, and Manami... Manami Hamabe. Mm-hmm. She's from Godzilla Minus One. Yep. Yep. Who's your winner? My winner, and this was tough, but I went with Emily Blunt. 
Oh. Oppenheimer. <clears throat> okay. Nice. Yep. I went with her because her scenes, there's so much emotion in her scenes. I mean, really, all these people did fantastic. Um, but she has a lot of range. Like Penelope Cruz and Ferrari, she's like mainly mad the whole time. Mm-hmm. But Emily Blunt has times where she's kind and gentle, and then she'll have times where she's horribly like depressed and in a bad state Mm -hmm. and then she'll be like this tough lady who's like you're trying to get one over on me but fuck you yeah so i think her range in oppenheimer with the little that she was on screen was pretty fucking awesome i love the scene at the end when einstein's talking about they'll feed you potato salad but it won't be for for you it'll be for them and then she like Benny Safty puts his hand out to shake her hand and she like doesn't do it. Yeah. Dude. And then the score like ramps up. Oh, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. Um I picked Divine Joy Randolph as my winner. I thought you might. Yeah. She's my favorite supporting actress of the year. I just she just has a real genuine feel in her performance. She feels like a real person. She carries a lot of charm. Never yeah, a lot of charm. She never feels like she's acting. She yeah. just feels very natural. And uh thought she was fucking sick. Yeah. So, King Penis. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. Crowned um, King Penis. Yep. Uh, supporting King Penis actor. You read these. All right. So, we've got RDJ, Oppenheimer. Dominic Sessa, Holdovers. Charles Melton, May December. Colt McCauley, I believe is how you pronounce it from iron claw he plays fritz mm-hmm. um and ryan gosling for barbie and uh, this one was kind of tough this one was tough for me too uh but i picked ryan gosling fuck you fuck you fuck you fuck you fuck <laughs> you i don't care i don't care Dude. i don't care fuck you i was i picked ryan gosling as well and i okay. was like at first instinct i was gonna do dominic sessa because he's just some kid yeah 17 year old high schooler yeah and they got him and he crushed it yeah like, i can't explain how much he crushed it but ryan and this could be me being sexist but ryan gosling stole the fucking show i think everyone Barbie. admits that like i love every sequence that he's in i care more about what's going on with ryan gosling as a supporting actor then I do the main story of. Barbie. I need a Ken cut of Barbie, <laughs> yeah. like a twenty-five minute YouTube video of just Ken yeah. scenes. He is. I'd have a great time. Electric. Yeah. Tech. I. I'm not complaining at all if anyone says Charles Melton was the best performance of the year. I almost picked him. Yeah. I think he's fucking amazing, but. Ryan Gosling's my boy. He's my favorite actor, and he was my favorite performance I, th- I thought that he just had so much energy and charm as ken and everything he just he's so funny he's also performing he's singing two songs yeah like he's just fucking performing yeah at a high level and it's already like iconic his performance as ken is already pretty fucking iconic yeah and uh you know fuck you fuck you fuck you fuck you i don't care <laughs> i don't Kennedy. care fucking hang me i don't yeah. i don't care ryan he's gosling it's rare you're going to see Ryan Gosling in a category that he doesn't win on this show. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to win most of the yeah, time. Yeah, on the scoopies, on the on the old scoop. <clears throat> we What can I say? We like we like Ryan around here. Yeah. He's our silly man. Um, What do we got up next? We have King Penis Actress. Lead right. Actress. You want to read those out? Yes. We have... Oh, shit. I just put Gladstone. <laughs> What was, what was her first name again? Lily. Lily Gladstone, uh, Greta Lee, Sophie Wilde, Sandra Huller, and Jillian Moore. And another, like, I can't express, like, this was a really good year for movies and really good for performances. Um, but I actually went with Sophie Wilde on this. Ooh, okay. Um, I thought her and Talk to Me, she's the lead actress to Talk to Me, she had to express like so much like height to her emotions. Like there's moments where she's supposed to sound like she's drowning. Mm-hmm. She's being possessed by different people. She's manic 
and in a state of insane like fear Mm -hmm. and i buy everything that she's doing and we watch the movie through her yeah so the whole movie hinges on her Yeah. yeah i think that she crushed it and i think that she had to convey so much fear and emotion and she did it she nailed it mm-hmm. and she was also sweet in the beginning too like she was yeah like really likable yeah she's very charming really sweet in the beginning and then you see her go down this dark spiral yeah by the way uh i didn't include him on i forgot about ryan gosling at first like it was just too obvious i forgot to put him in my nominations but before i put ryan gosling in i had joe bird from talk to me who is the little brother oh yeah and i just wanted to shout him out because i thought he was really good oh heck talk yeah to me. Dude. heck yeah um but yeah my king penis actress is sandra huller however you pronounce it i'm not sure i think she's German. i think it's hewler it's probably hewler yeah yeah but anatomy of a fall I mean, the performances in Anatomy of a Fall are... Um, oh, also, shout out to the kid in Anatomy of a Fall. He's oh, really good. yeah. Forgot yeah. to include him on the noms. But uh, the performances just feel like you're watching a documentary. It's it so, never so feels natural. like acting. Yeah. And specifically, Sandra Hewler, she was... I mean, she's in, like, almost every scene. She She is the whole movie. And I just thought she was the best. Uh, I don't know. It's just felt like such a natural, real performance. So, heck yeah, give I it respect it. Him. Yeah. Respect it. Yep, uh, Rooney. And uh, now we've got King Penis actor. Yep. Top lead actor. Yeah. So uh, we have six noms in this category because there was just some people I didn't want to leave out. But, um,. We've got Killian Murphy, Good Paul shot. Giamatti, Zac Efron, Nick Cage for Dream Scenario, Barry Cogan, Saltburn, and Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. Because I wanted to put Tom Cruise on here <laughs> because he never gets any credit for his action performances. It says best performance, not best dramatic performance. He's performing. He's he's doing action. He's performing in a movie for our entertainment. And he's fucking awesome. He's 60 years old and he's riding bikes off mountains for our entertainment. Yeah. Because he loves movies and he loves popcorn. So he's the fucking man. And I just wanted to give him some credit. Because unless he does like fucking Rain Man or some shit, he never gets any, any buzz at the Oscars. But he should, because it's not just about the pleasures of conformity <laughs> and the importance of trends. It's also a personal statement about the band itself. So yeah, no, uh, I'm glad we I'm glad we included Tom Cruise. Yeah, Tiny Tom. He's, yeah, he needs got to have him on. Yeah, there. he's got to be there. Yeah, um, but obviously I picked Killian. Yeah, I, I picked Killshot yeah. too. <laughs> fuck all the fuck all the stupid shit. I Killian. <laughs> yeah, uh, Killian is is my winner. Yeah. Um, it's just such a nuanced performance. He he has to do so much, but it's like he has to be understated. He never really gets a scene where he gets to like yell and be a psycho. Like the scenes where most people, most like Oscar winners, you know, they have like that scene where they're yelling, like uh, marriage story, marriage story, the big yeah. breakdown. <laughs> I hope you get hit by a bus and fucking die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shit like that. Uh, He's just, Oppenheimer was a very, like, soft-spoken person, and the amount of gravity he has as this character, um, in small little moments, I just, I think his line delivery is perfect, I think his accent's perfect, he got all the mannerisms right, and he, like, talk about being the movie. Yeah. There may not be a shot of this movie where he's not in it. I mean, the the runtime's three hours... He's at le- he's at least in like two hours and fifty nine minutes of the movie. <laughs> yeah, dude. yeah, it's, it's ridiculous how often he's on screen, and he fucking killed it. Yeah, I also think that's part of the genius of Oppenheimer is that he never gets that big scene, 
but they use the visuals in the movie to portray his internal uh, like feelings that he mm-hmm. doesn't manifest to people. Yeah. But I'd say the scene where he gets to express the most is the scene after the incident with Florence Pugh and like he's out in the out in the desert and like yeah. Emily Blunt finds him and he's crying. Yeah. That's about it. Like other than that he's just got to be pretty like serious and like you know. Yeah. Not really show too much emotion. But, <clears throat> Ah, uh, he's just so. But even that, good. like, if he doesn't win the Oscar, I'm gonna be upset. Yeah. Unless it goes to something crazy, like if they give it to Zac Efron or like Paul Giamatti or something. Yeah. But like, it's got to be Killian. Yeah, I do think that some people overlook a, like more reserved performances to find the big, big, huge performances. Loud performances. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I'm very, very familiar with Killian Murphy. Yeah. And I see him in Oppenheimer, and he is Oppenheimer. Yeah. I don't see Killian Murphy anymore. Yeah. Also, side note, <clears throat> um, Leonardo DiCaprio should have won Best Actor for Rick Dalton instead of Joaquin Phoenix for Joker. Just wanted to throw that out there. Heck yeah. Do you agree with that statement? I do, yeah. Okay. I think so. I just wanted to... <laughs> just had to say that. You're a miserable drunk. <laughs> I have eight... <laughs> I just, Could talk I about three or four. I ain't gonna hurt her. I just want her to play the fiddle. <laughs> you tell her to play her little chili pepper heart out. <laughs> Anything we can do about that heat? <laughs> it's flame. It's a flame thrower. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> Anyone order fried sauerkraut? <laughs> Die, you Nazi <laughs> bastards! <laughs> <laughs> oh, here I come! Here I come! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, so that was big King Penis actor. Um, and then we have the Him For Real Award, which is Best Director. Yeah, he's him for real. Yeah, he's him for real. Yep. Um, the nominations are Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer, James Gunn for Guardians of the Galaxy 3, Chad Stahelski for John Wick 4, um, Durkin for The Holdovers, and, oh no, Durkin's uh, Iron Claw. Mm-hmm. Iron Claw. And, um, fuck. I'm drawing a blank. The killer. Come on. <laughs> you got it. Fuck. Push. <laughs> Push. What's his name? David Fincher. David Fincher. <laughs> God bless, dude. <laughs> what a fucking dumbass. <laughs> Don't you have some milk to drink, yeah. you fucking idiot. David Fincher for the killer. <laughs> God, I'm a fucking idiot, dude. <laughs> Why did it, why did, why am I doing this? All right, you're supposed to have this all in your notes. I How just, you, just look at I'm your phone, an idiot, <laughs> and I just wrote down the killer. <laughs> I just wrote best down. director, the killer. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Fassbender goes on stage yeah. with his and his fucking hat. <laughs> you made the movie he eating now. his boiled egg. <laughs> God damn! Pardon my stupidity for a second. Uh, yeah, David Venture for the killer. Um, my pick, obviously, it's Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer. Yep. yep. So, just to clarify, <laughs> these uh, these director nominations, I tried to pick directors that I think elevated their films beyond what was on the page, and The Killer was my number nine movie of the year. So I didn't like, I wasn't absolutely in love with it, but I think that David Fincher's direction was perfect. And his direction is what is the reason I like the movie as much as I do. He's a fucking master. Yeah. And uh, Sean Durkin, I thought he directed the shit out of the Iron Claw and elevated what was on the page. Uh, James Gunn, Chad Stahelski. Not that it matters, but if Oppenheimer didn't come out this year, I would be giving this to Chad Stahelski. I would be, yeah. He's he's the runner-up for me. He was... We can't keep talking about John yeah. before. It, I'm gonna... I mean, that movie, really, that movie doesn't get made without Chad Stahelski. No. Like, there's there's no one else no. that's doing action on that level. Yeah. It probably so. gets made as a Peacock original, and they recast Keanu Reeves for fucking Ezra Miller or some dumb <laughs> shit. Um, but yeah, those are why we picked the guys we did, and it's Christopher Nolan. Yeah. I mean, he... Holy fucking shit. I mean... 
I, Christopher Nolan's my favorite director, and I still didn't think I would like Oppenheimer as much as I do. I mean, it is a it's a master class on like yeah. every level, directing, writing, everything, and the reason Oppenheimer is so good is because of his directing. Yeah, like just the the little shit like uh, Oppenheimer daydreaming in his bed in, in college, and then the little atoms like swirling in front of the camera like the blue atoms and yeah. it's like him daydreaming but they actually film that like that's not cgi christopher nolan himself held like this little thing this like metal wire with like this blue ball on the end of it and like spun it really fast and that's got this crazy. like dude he's just fucking working on another level he made a court scene feel like fucking 9 11 yeah I That's, thought I was about to get shot in the head. Yeah, I thought my heart was about to explode during a court scene. Yeah. Like, it's it's insane. The man is king penis at everything. He's transcended reality. He's in a higher dimension than everyone else. Roger rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, not to mention he's just the coolest he's guy He's just ever. the coolest fucking guy. If you're not first, you're last. If you're not first, you're last. <laughs> he's dude, he's wearing a suit. People always think fucking Ricky Bobby, dude. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, Robert Downey Jr. talked about how, like, as an actor, there's two Christopher Nolans, and there's the one that you haven't met yet that you're terrified of because you've seen his work and you know how professional he is and how serious he is, and then there's the Christopher Nolan that after you've met him and you realize how much of a normal funny like goofy guy he is <laughs> and i just think that's like that's like hollywood's best kept secret is yeah. how fucking silly christopher nolan <laughs> is roderick rules is a crazy <laughs> response yeah <laughs> roderick rules yeah <laughs> like why he didn't, have you he seen didn't even say like wimpy kid he didn't even say like yeah my kids really like those movies so i've seen them or no. like oh yeah like i was doing research for the casting and like I saw him I saw him audition so I checked out what he's been in yeah. before he just that was his response like he's Roger seen rules. <laughs> he's seen yeah <laughs> he's a part of the mythos yeah <laughs> and like he acknowledged that like he knew Josh Peck from Drake and Josh yeah so like he's just a fucking Chad I also love he's fucking sick there's a video of him going into the video store with I forget who else was with him Killian Murphy Killian Murphy yeah yeah and he picks up every single movie and goes, oh, I love this film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love, I've seen that video. <laughs> He's seen everything and he loves everything. Yeah. That's crazy. Dude. How can you not like Christopher Nolan? He's the coolest. Yeah. All right. So Oppenheimer for him for real. Mm -hmm. Christopher Nolan. Now we have the, uh, sex to the ears, which is best score. Yep. So we have Oppenheimer nominated. Uh, Ludwig. Yep. Across the Spider Verse. I don't know if I know who did the score. Daniel for that. Pemberton. Okay. Um, TMNT, Suzumi, and The Killer. Yep. We have, I just realized, we have two Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross scores on here. Ooh. Because they did, I mean, they did Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right? Oh, yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah, Trent Reznor and Atticus and Ross did The Killer and Team NT. Hell yeah. Because they're, they're fucking, just fucking sick. They're crushing it, dude. Yeah. Uh, my winner is quite yeah, obviously fuck Oppenheimer. fuck all that noise. It's Ludwig yeah, Gorsuch. Fuck all the dumb <laughs> shit. Oppenheimer. Yeah. It's, <coughs> I mean, that one... There's... I will not be entertaining any other ideas. Yeah. I will not hear any other people's opinions on what should win best score if their answer is an Oppenheimer. You're yeah. a fool. I, You're a fucking fool. And I don't want to be associated with you. I listen to Can You Hear the Music? Every day. Yeah, it's been every day. Multiple times a day, probably. I put it on when I had like 16 hours of work to do and I had to do it in like four. Yeah. And I finished with time to spare. Yeah. It's fucking goes. Yeah. It's like, dude, because I rewatched Oppenheimer recently. That fucking score is insane. It's a masterpiece. Because it also like plays throughout the whole movie. Like it's a very score heavy movie. Yeah. And 
the score is part of the reason the movie flows so properly and uh, there's like these motifs that you hear throughout but it's also so diverse like the noises you're hearing like um the trinity test sounds nothing yeah oh my god the trinity test sounds nothing like can you hear the music which sounds nothing like the trial which sounds nothing like uh meeting kitty like just a fucking fission fission yeah fission slaps dude yeah oh my god um and then just like the oppenheimer it's just called oppenheimer i think it's what plays uh during the credits and it's also what plays uh on the blu-ray home screen Dude. Uh, this shit right here. Oh, God, yeah. It's just fucking sick. Ludwig um, is a psychopath. He needs to be banned. Yeah. He needs to be banned. He is the next Hans Zimmer. Yeah. And I mean, I, is... it's crazy because I didn't really know anything about Ludwig until Tenet when what Hans Zimmer didn't do the score and they got Ludwig to do it. Yeah. And that was like my first, unless I saw a movie that I didn't realize he did the score to it. But I mean, he stepped in, and dude, he's a fucking. He's prodigy. been fucking going insane. I mean, he did the Black Panther score. Oh my god! And I know you, you're not huge on Black Panther, but the score is one of the best parts the of Black Panther. Yeah, is insanely good. It, it feels like Wakanda. Yeah, and like the Tenet score is one of the best things I've ever heard in my goddamn life. Yeah. So he's doing he like t- the Mandalorian. Yeah, the Mandalorian. Like every single thing he does feels perfect it feels exactly like what the movie should sound like yeah and uh, i mean i'm really glad that no one's working with ludwig now instead of han zimmer because i love han zimmer but (laughs) sometimes his scores can sound alike they can sound like sometimes he kind of just does like rinse and repeat the same thing yeah sometimes not like interstellar is still the best score i've ever heard in my life yeah and it sounds nothing like anything he's done before. And he's done Pirates of the Caribbean and, yeah. you know, he's the GOAT. Yeah. But Ludwig, like, every single thing he does so feels exciting. so distinct. Everything he does, he builds he builds a world in, like, the tones that happen. Yeah. And it's it's just excellent. Yeah. Ludwig doesn't fucking miss. Yeah. He's chewing them up. He's chopping it up. Greg is chopping it up. <laughs> Greg is chopping it up. Yeah. Um, he's, he's a deadlock for the win if... If he if doesn't get it, if they dude. read any other name than Ludwig Göransson on a, on the night of the Oscars, I'm gonna hurt somebody. I will do unnameable things. Yeah. That I can't mention here on the scoop. <laughs> I will do things I'm not proud of. <coughs> um, it's gonna be bad. Yeah. But hopefully that won't happen, because I, I feel like they know, like that. Well. They don't know because last year the Batman should have won, and they gave it to fucking bomb. <laughs> they gave Dude, it to that because that's better. That that's a better score, right? That's that's that score is cool, but it's give also it, that through the whole movie. Or give it to Babylon. Babylon was the one score like that I would understand beating the Batman. Yeah, Batman didn't even make the fucking short list. Yeah, let alone the nominations. But like, didn't make the short list. You're telling like, me it wasn't a top 20 score of the year. That's crazy. It that's was the best score of the year. And you're telling me it wasn't top 20. Yeah. Fucking suck my dick. Yeah. I don't know. I I liked the all quiet thing, but that's that's the only song from All Quiet if there is others that no. stood out to me. It's it's one track and they just loop it. Yeah. That's the th- I'm like, that's cool, but that's that's all you did. Yeah, that one thing. Like you Batman one has note. multiple songs. Yeah, you got one guy with a trumpet to just play one note for thirty minutes. Bom, bom. <laughs> yeah, versus Voodoo Mama. Yeah, that's what. Are, what the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> what are we even yeah. talking about? Versus fucking. Um, uh, oh, I'm disappointed in myself. No, the uh, the opening, opening fucking shit in the Batman. <coughs> Can't fight City Halloween. Oh yeah, dude. Dude, that's that's better. That's better. Sorry, like go fuck yourself. Fucking How about be dead now. Die. You... <laughs> 
how about you grow up? Get real. Yeah. How about that? Hey, Putin. <laughs> fucking get real. All right. Atheists. <laughs> Explain this. <laughs> hey, Stalin. Knock it off. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. All right. What do we got next? Kama cinematography. Ah, I you see. You want to read the noms for that? Do you want to do it? You yeah. want me to do it? I can do it. All right. Um, we've got Oppenheimer. Oppenhizzy. John Wick Foe. On John Wheezy. Saltburn. Salt Wheezy. <laughs> Asteroid City. Ast Wheezy. <laughs> and the killer. The kill Wheezy. <laughs> that's, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> who's your Who's your cumest cinematography? Um, just rip the band-aid off. Surprise, surprise. It's Oppenheimer. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Mine's not. Whoa. Mine's John Wick 4. That's crazy that you're wrong. Oh, am I? Yeah. It's uh, it's Oppenheimer. <laughs> I don't know if you heard, but it's Oppenheimer. <laughs> this might be a shock to you. Yeah, dude, I was, I was thinking about it. Like, I was comparing them, and they're one and two, obviously. If it didn't go to John Wick 4, it'd go to Oppenheimer. But I was thinking about... Like shots, like which <coughs> film? I know there's more to cinematography than like which had the coolest shots, but John Wick wins that battle of coolest shots. Yeah, if you narrow it down to that one thing and and base it on that one thing, yeah. Okay, so what is Oppenheimer better at? Everything. No, name one thing. It's everything. Oh, everything, dude. It's it's they do some of the coolest shit with the camera work that they do. It's fucking awesome. Like, the shaking in the stadium, the flashbacks, the daydreaming, like, it's all visually. I I busted thousands of nuts watching Oppenheimer. And John Wick 4 does have really cool shots. The one that stands out to me in John Wick 4 is the big one-take top-down one. And then the sets are really cool. It does have the edge on, like, the sets and, like... They're in cooler places, I guess. But I think Oppenheimer was... With them not using any CGI, I think it was harder to do and a bit more impressive. Just on the cinematography side of things. Sure. I just know... I prefer the cinematography from John Wick 4. And I just watched it last night, so it's pretty fresh in my mind. And... Every fucking scene in that movie, I could frame and put on my wall. So, it being an action movie doesn't move me. I don't give a fuck. Like I said earlier, it transcends action movies, and it's just one of the best movies I've ever seen. And it doesn't beat Oppenheimer in much, but I think cinematography is, like, the only thing it beats it at. Beat shit. <laughs> no, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. I think... I think it, fucking this guy. Get a I think it is like. Buddy over here. I think it should be down. Like those are the top two, for sure. Mm. Oppenheimer, John Wick Four, and I think probably close in at third place. I would put Saltburn. Mm. But Oppenheimer yeah. and John. If John Wick Four wins, I it wouldn't hurt my feelings. I don't think it will. I don't know how much love John Wick 4 is going to get at the Oscars. Dude, I they, can see it getting snubbed. I don't like everything. I don't think they're going to give it much, yeah. unfortunately. They don't like fucking action movies. Yeah. They're, they don't like having fun. They're genre <laughs> at the Oscars. genre <laughs> Yeah. Um, next up, we've got Funniest Scene. This one was hard because, like... There's so many fucking funny scenes. I could make you a list of 15 funny scenes just in Guardians 3. Yeah. Guardians 3 is a hilarious movie. Yeah. So we kind of uh, saturated the nominees on this one a little yeah. bit. But we've got uh, <coughs> the the corner scene um, from Dream Scenario. Um, which we got to like explain what they are. Okay. Um. This is the scene in Dream Scenario when he goes to the girl's apartment and she wants him to recreate what he was doing in her dream. So he goes and stands in the corner. She's like, okay, now go stand in the corner. 
And he goes and stands there and like tries to walk back. And she's like, no, stay there. <laughs> and, and he tries to talk and she's like, no, don't talk. You weren't talking in the dream. Just stand there. And it's just the funniest shit. Like, it's not going to sound funny describing it, but if you watch it, it, dude, it's, I could not control myself. It's a whole like set because even when she was like, all right, now come, come forward. Like just the way he walks yeah. forward is yeah, like he's it's funny. Down the and then road. when he sits down on the couch, she's like trying to get down with him, and then he fucking, <laughs> she grabs his penis and he farts and comes. He farts and comes at the same time. It yes, makes it a goofy noise. Time. Yeah. Dude. He's like, ah, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's so fucking good. Yeah. And then also from Dream Scenario, we've got the montage of the students telling him what he was doing in their dreams, which is like a five minute sequence of just like eight different dreams. And it's really funny because he's getting upset that he's not doing anything in them. Yeah. They're like, yeah, I was getting chased by this alligator and you were just standing there. Yeah. Every I was just standing there. Yeah. They play out all the dreams and like terrible things are happening to people. And they look over and he's just walking past. <laughs> yeah, he's just slowly walking by. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one's really funny. Um, there's like, like I said, there's like 15 in Guardians 3 that we could we could have done. Um, but one of my favorites in Guardians 3 in terms of comedy was what I call the spacesuit scene, which is when they all jump out of the ship and they're like landing on another ship to break into Nathan Fillion's ship. And... Um, they have like radios in their suits and Peter's trying to talk to Gamora. And so he puts it on like a certain channel, like it matches her like suit. Yeah. And, uh, he, he starts like, like confessing a lot of stuff and like being very vulnerable. And, and then they like interrupt him, and they're like, dude, we can hear you. It's like, <laughs> what? He's like, I put it on, I put it on the red channel. And he was like, yeah, that's the public, that's the public line or whatever. And, uh, and then he was like, uh, so what, what color is Gamora? And then he was like, Gamora's button is green. He was like, blue means red, red means green, green means yellow, yellow means blue. <laughs> and then he was like, how was I supposed to know that? He's like, it seemed intuitive. <laughs> yeah, dude, Drax is so funny in yeah. that movie. Yeah. It seemed intuitive. <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> Mantis is like, yeah, we heard everything. And Drax goes, and it was painful. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, he's like, why didn't you say anything? They're like, we were hoping it would stop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. There's so many. There's another one on the list of the kitchen scene from Guardians 3. Yes. Which is like uh, when they're in the aliens, they land on the alien planet and they go into that lady's house and they're like sitting at the table with them and like trying to get information out of them so they know where to go. And Drax is like sitting on the couch and he keeps like, leaning over and trying to lay down on the couch and they keep getting mad at him and he's like that's what it's for and and they're like no you sit up you sit up on the couch it's not for laying down he's like why is it oblong then <laughs> and, <laughs> um and then peter is trying to describe the guy that they're looking for so he draws it on a piece of paper and it looks atrocious. It's a it looks, circle it's a circle with a box on it yeah on with it. an eyeball and, he goes, have you and seen he's like have you man? seen this man <laughs> and he does it all dramatic and it's just like a stick figure yeah. and they go that looks just like him yeah you killed it yeah. <laughs> that whole scene is so fucking funny but you know guardians 3 as a whole is yeah. just Hilarious. second best you know that i just that whole movie's so fucking funny um and then uh tmnt the aki way yeah Yerd, yerd, <laughs> bacon, egg, and cheese, bacon, egg, and cheese with the bev, with the bev, <laughs> dude. The Mikey starts twerking. Yeah, the kids in Teen M T that play the turtles have so much chemistry with each other mm -hmm. in that movie, and it makes everything like more funny. Yeah, than it should be. Yeah. So the Aki way was hilarious. Yeah, it's, and like little things you can barely hear because they all talk over each other, but. Like there's, they're talking about humans and how like there's some humans that they like and someone says Drake and then Ra uh, Raph goes, dude, he's the goat of all time. <laughs> and I just thought, I just yeah. think little shit like that's so funny. Cause like, that's not what you say. <laughs> yeah. Smooth like butter. Smooth like 
butter. Come on, guys. Come on, Come on smooth guys. like butter. <laughs> you don't even know the words. <laughs> oh, is God. that a milker? <laughs> Does that say milking machine? <laughs> Why do you always go straight to milking? <laughs> we don't even have nipples. Jesus Christ, dude. I yeah. love tea and tea. Yeah. All right. So, funniest scene. I gave it to the corner scene from Dream Scenario. Mm, I did as well. Yeah. Dude. I don't when, think I've laughed more at a scene than, he, than that. I don't know if it's because the guys beside me were dying laughing. That, that didn't, that didn't make it any worse. I laughed through like over the next couple scenes yeah. and drown out yeah. the movie. I it's was not like, really something we can like recreate on the podcast. It's just, you got to see it for yourself, yeah. but it is so fucking, I'm buying the Blu-ray just so I can rewatch that. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> um, it's great. Next up, we got best needle drop. We've got no sleep till Brooklyn guardians three mm-hmm. dog days are over guardians three Tom Sawyer in the iron claw. Hell yeah. Hard dick shit. Murder on the dance floor, salt burn, and paint it black in John Wick 4. With an honorable mention of Mama Said Knock You Out from Transformers Rise of the Beast. It almost made the list. We we wound up having to cut it, but just because I think these other nominations are better, but that one, I wanted to at least throw a shout yeah. out. When Bumblebee comes off the plane, dude. Yeah. I came. Yeah. I, I love that scene. Yeah. And most people <clears throat> don't like that movie, so fuck them. We're the cool ones. All we right? know... I know bangers. <laughs> I know bangers. Yeah, this is not a banger. <laughs> and I know bangers. Rise of the Beast is fucking awesome. Yeah. I want to own it. I need to buy it. Yeah. People are just silly. Yeah. Goofballs that don't know tr- the truth. Yeah. And we do. Silly men that do silly things. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What's your pick for best needle drop? This one was tough. I think all of these, maybe except for Paint It Black, are worthy of winning. Um, but I went... On my list, it says I went with No Sleep Till Brooklyn. I'm saying, saying on my list because like it... Are you second guessing your I, list? I, I don't know. Because like, I'm going to tell you right now, like... Paint it black, I think, didn't make it because it's uh, in French. And I get that they're in France and it makes sense. I don't think that would make a difference for me if it was in English. I thought the setup to it, like her saying like the man in black is coming and then Mm -hmm. it comes up and it plays paint it black. And I'm just like, that theme, that's pretty cool. I went with uh, Dog Days from Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, See, that's what I'm thinking about. And I kind of narrowed it down to like, after... Guardians, I added Dog Days to my playlist and listened to it all the time. I never mm-hmm. skip that song anymore because it makes... And it it's also creates a scene that's so filled with emotion. Like, No Sleep Till Brook- Brooklyn is badass. It mm-hmm. gets my wiener hard. I'm there for it. They fight. It's sick. Yeah. But Dog Days encapsul- encapsulates so much like emotion, like this bittersweet moment that they're having. Of like moving on to the next chapter. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you see Drax dancing. Yeah, after Drax seeing only idiots dance. Nebula's like you know like yelling into the crowd with all the kids and stuff. Yeah, uh, Rocket's dancing with Groot. It's it's fucking. I'm awesome. gonna change my answer. I, I also am picking Dog Days. You're lame. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Is that what you think? <laughs> no, I. You know what was actually a close second for me was. Murder on the dance floor. Dude. <coughs> I think that's a fucking baller ass needle Dude. drop. And then you get the re- the the naked reveal. Alright. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> Dude. I've I've been jamming out to murder on the dance floor. Yeah. I was listening to it at the gym. That's Thinking cool. about cock. <laughs> like <laughs> Maybe if I work out hard enough, my penis will get bigger. My penis will grow. Yeah. And I'll look like Barry. Yeah. Um, yeah, dog days are over. Best needle drop. <clears throat> now we've got the next award called Holy Shit He's Packing. <laughs> to which we have one nominee. The one nominee is Barry Kogan. Yeah. And the winner's Barry Kogan. <laughs> 
I thought we were going to get some some kill shot peen in Oppenheimer. We got close. We got close. We saw we saw his cheeks. We yeah. saw some cheeks, but yeah, never shaft. Yeah. He never hung. Brain. It's like when he was sitting in that chair, like he had his leg crossed, and it was like. How about you fucking uncross it so I can see your Johnson? <laughs> How about that? Google, show me this guy's balls, please. <laughs> Google, show me this guy's balls, so please. Can see your Jamie, Johnson. Jamie, pull up this guy's balls, please. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, <laughs> Close, but no cigar. Yeah. So Barry wins best <laughs> cock yep. of the year. Um, next up, we've got best scene that features come. Um, to which we have one nominee. <laughs> Which is the salt burn bathtub scene. Also Barry Cogan. And the winner's the salt salt burn bathtub scene. <laughs> yeah. Um, featuring Barry Cogan. Yep. The just an awesome scene. Boy dinner. Just boy dinner, you know. <laughs> yeah. Just men doing guy things. Yeah. What's wrong with it? You're telling me you've never slurped on your boy's cum water before? <laughs> Come bath. Water. That's what you're telling me. You've never put your tongue in a drain. Go ahead and lie. Yeah. Go ahead and lie and act like you haven't done it. We've all thought it. <laughs> we But they just have the balls to show it to you. Exactly. Yeah. And now the women know <clears throat> that we do it. Yeah. That was supposed to be our secret, but it's it's all in the open now. Sometimes you just you need a swig. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way. <laughs> by the way, when we were watching Saltburn, um I was like, uh, the scene where Jacob Elordi, they're at the pool, and Jacob Elordi is like pretty visibly upset with Barry, and uh, and he doesn't know why. And I was like, oh, like, uh, what? What's his name? The dustman lap guy. Oh, Farley. Farley. Yeah, I was like, oh, Farley told him that like Barry was, you know, went vampire mode on his sister. Yeah. And the girl was like. Please never say vampire mode again in your entire life. Dude, that was rough. <laughs> you went straight from like the bathtub scene to that. I was like, dude, this guy doesn't give a fuck yeah. about it. Dude, Io Edabiri's letterbox <laughs> review. She said, so he was doing all that, but can't eat runny eggs. <laughs> dude, that's crazy. That is kind of crazy now that, now that I'm thinking about yeah. it. You should be able to stomach anything, pal. Yeah. God damn. <laughs> what a nasty fuck. <laughs> All right. Next up. Big category here. Yep. Cummest scene. Uh, this goes without saying. It's the cummest scene. Yeah. So uh, we've got a lot on here. Here's the nominees. Oppenheimer, Trinity Test. Oppenheimer, final scene. I believe we did that scene. Mm -hmm. Oppenheimer, post-bombing speech. Fuck yeah. Where he where people are stomping their feet and he's hallucinating shit. No sleep till Brooklyn, Guardians Three. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Holdovers, <clears throat> penis cancer scene. <laughs> Holdovers, cherry jubilee scene. John Wick Four, Dragon's Breath scene, which is the overhead Top overhead down. sequence. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> across the Spider Verse, the twist reveal plus the chase yeah. out of the spider society building that's like a it's not really a scene that's like a big portion but it's all awesome i mean i feel like that's yeah yeah you're probably right but i think that like the scene of them telling him what's going on is a lot cooler than the chase yeah 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 so but i also like um when peter b parker like is talking to him too yeah and then him jumping off the train at the top that was sick yeah. That whole sequence is awesome. I have a confession to make, though. I've never told anyone this. Uh, when they get to, like, the top of that, like, train thing, when they're chasing him, and, like, Miguel's got him pinned down, and uh, uh, Miles, like, electrocutes him and escapes, and he, his, like, cool line that he says is, nah, I'ma do my own thing. Never liked that line. I've got to be honest. I don't think it's a good line. I don't either. And it's also... And it's become really popular now. Because it's like a huge movie and it's a huge moment in the movie. I never liked that that's what they chose. Yeah, it also seems weird. It sounds weird coming out of Miles. Because he's so, like, dorky. He's like, you keep telling me I don't belong here. Nah. I'm going to do my own thing. And yeah. then, like, jumps off. <clears throat> it's just, like... It's not... I don't know. It's It gives me, like... I came here to stop you. 
It gives me the <laughs> yeah. vibe. Like, like you could have packed more like of a punch. Like, the other guy said something fucking sick, and your response was lame. Yeah. Like, you didn't show him. Like, you should say something back that's like, oh, fuck. Like, he got him. Yeah. Fucking loser. That's what, that's what should have <laughs> yeah. happened. Dude, how would you feel about this right here? That reveal was pretty shocking, and then he had some. How about that? I may need to find a new co-host. <laughs> I don't want anything like that to ever happen again. That's sick, dude. What are you talking about? <laughs> Anyways. That's an uh, awesome line. Yeah, I never liked, I never liked that line. No, I'm going to do my own thing. I, I don't know. It doesn't Was doesn't mine work worse or better than... I'm it's much worse. <laughs> you know, you don't need me to tell you that. You know it's worse. Um, <clears throat> and then the last scene was uh, Mutant Mayhem, No Diggity. Which was fucking badass, dude. Yeah. That scene was, like, so well executed. Yeah. The way it's edited and planned out, and they, like, it, like, cuts between the turtles, but they're all, like, synced up, so it's, like, one continuous motion, but it swaps out, like, all the different turtles. It's fucking sick. It's fucking sick. But I chose, for my winner, the end scene of Oppenheimer. I chose the end scene of Oppenheimer, too. That scene gives me chills. Yeah. I feel a very um, bleak, like, fear Yeah, at the end of Oppenheimer. The and combination such... of the score and the visuals that you're seeing and the conversation that they're having, it's like an ethereal experience. Yeah. It it's should, also it should be banned. It should not be possible yeah. to be operating on that kind of a level. It's fucking genius too to capture like the gravity of the situation, like how much of an impact that this is going to now have on the world. And they capture it in that one little back and forth mm-hmm. between the the uh, uh, Einstein and Oppenheimer. Yeah. And it, the like Killian Murphy at the end, him like staring off into the lake mm-hmm. with this like death stare is yeah. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, it is perfect yep. in every way. Best scene of the year. Come a scene, sorry. <clears throat> um, next category is holy fuck that stunt choreography made me come in my pants. I wonder who's gonna win this. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got five <clears throat> nominees: John Wick Four, Guardians Three. Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, The Killer, and The Iron Claw. Uh, the winner's The Iron Claw. Whoa, you jumped right over Ant-Man 3. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you, dude? Sorry, that's... Yeah, you've got the old list. Oh. you got to revise it to the, the <laughs> Ant-Man fault. 3 list. No, the winner's John Wick 4. Yeah. There's not even... Come on. We don't even need to talk about yes. this. People think I'm joking around when I say it's the best action movie ever made. And I'm I like, thought I was crazy leaving the theater for the first time, like, thinking that. Yeah. I was like, there's no flaws. Yeah. That's a flawless movie. Yeah, pe- I don't think people... So you officially like it more <clears throat> than Fury Road? Yeah. Dude, it... I can't tell you how much of a... Well... Yeah, I can tell you, I, I like think it so. significantly more. I think so. Fury Road's a lot of fun, but I think pound for pound, John Wick Four has got John it. John Wick Four has so much variation yeah. in in what it's doing. Like the first act is in Japan, and people are using fucking samurai swords and nunchucks and cool shit. And there's a scene where he's in the desert, and then he goes to fucking Paris, yeah. and. Uh, <clears throat> it's just all, and then he goes into the nightclub where it's fucking raining for some reason, and he's yeah. fighting Scott Adkins in a fat suit, and <laughs> which they put him in the fat suit just to put him in a fat yeah, suit. Yeah, and then he's getting tortured by Russians, and then he's playing fucking cards, and then he cuts a guy's throat with a card. It's like this. It's always changing. It's always uh, and then the stair scene at the end. Oh yeah, like. Oh, dude, when when he cuts that guy's throat, Logan went, oh. <laughs> like, like, what the fuck? Why is that your reaction? <laughs> just because it's crazy. Like, that's that's a crazy. John guy. Wick. What do you think? I know, but it's just, it's still, like, startling. Yeah, that's, that's funny. 
Um, no, it's it's John Wick. Yeah. I I can't think of a movie that's doing action better than John Wick, and people like raved about Fury Road, mm-hmm. and I feel like it's better than Fury Road, and not enough people are talking about how fucking good John Wick Four is. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's because it's the fourth movie; it's not like an original. But but that Fury shouldn't Road matter. Was a fourth movie. Yeah, but it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a soft reboot a little bit. Yeah, but. I don't know. I just feel like John Wick 4 isn't getting enough respect, dude. It's fucking insane. Dude, there's some people that give it the respect that it deserves. And it's like in every... I just hate that Oppenheimer came out the same year. Because, like, I want to give John Wick 4 just, like, everything. Like, I wish it was my favorite movie of the year. But it's really, like, Guardians 3... I still have Guardians 3 over it just because the emotion that I feel during Guardians 3. Yeah, I think... And that I, may change eventually. They're both 5 out of 5. Yeah. But John Wick doesn't really make me feel anything other than, like, having an erection. <laughs> yeah. But Guardians 3 is, like... it'll If I'm locked in and, like, paying attention to it, it'll make me cry. Yeah. So I'm, I, It'll make me laugh. I've got it stacked up the same way now. But, yeah. I mean, an action movie, a, a full-bore action movie being in the top top five movies of the year is I ridiculous feel like insane yeah it being just top a, three competing with oppenheimer and guardians three is wild that's yeah. crazy yep yeah. there's some there's some people that really love it and give it the flowers it deserves and then there's some people that just didn't like it they, they just like don't like action movies i guess can you imagine <laughs> just not liking having fun, fun yeah and being a cool guy yeah Nah, fucking morons. Yeah. Anyways. Um, next up we got film that made me want to cut off my left toe and blend it up and drink it. <laughs> what a category. If, if you know me, you probably know what what I chose for my winner here. Uh, but the nominees are The Nun 2, Insidious The Red Door, The Exorcist Believer, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, and Mario. And I'm going to rip the band-aid off. I chose fucking Mario. Really? Because it fucking sucks. That's why. <laughs> it blows dick. That's why. Because it fucking sucks. Oh, dude. This was kind of a hard one for me, too. All these movies suck ass, dude. <laughs> Like, None of them suck ass as much as Mario. I don't know, dude. Exorcist Believer is garbage. Ant-Man 3 was garbage. The Nun 2 was garbage. The Red Door was garbage. Mario was garbage. Like The movie I hated the most... I'd say... Ant-Man 3. Mm. The close second for me was exorcist believer okay and it just sucks because one of the biggest sins you you can make a bad movie and i will walk away from that and say you did a bad job (laughs) but at least you tried something yeah but when you're trying to take like valuable um properties and you do a dog shit thing with that now it becomes a bigger problem when you're taking like the exorcist property, something that people hold very dear and you take a shit on it and you say, I hope you like this. <laughs> now we have a problem, pal. Hope you guys like <clears throat> this steaming pile of shit. I just <laughs> yeah. cooked up. Let me know what you think. <laughs> I'm not going to let you shit in my mouth and make me call it chocolate ice cream. <laughs> you just shit in my mouth, dude. <laughs> um, oh, Ant-Man three, I think is, like Marvel is is bad right now. Mm-hmm. It's bad. Flat out bad. Yep. Guardians 3 was their shining light and now they don't have that anymore. So they're bad. They don't have the gunster. Yeah. Gun is gone. Gun's doing cool stuff. Yep. Follow him. But I feel like Ant-Man 3 was like okay, this is where Marvel is at now. Yeah. And it was horrible. Yep. And it also has uh, terrible jokes. Yep. Like I thought I was gonna at least get Paul Rudd being funny, and 
he really didn't Dude, deliver on a, a lot of stuff. Movie being that. funny saves it. It yeah. saves everything about it. Just land the jokes. If Ant Man three was like horrible narratively, but it was like really funny. It was like as funny as Guardians three, but without the quality. I'd give it like a four star. Yeah, but it's in it's ridiculously unfunny. And it looks like fucking dog shit. There's no there's other than like Jonathan Majors is like pretty cool as Kang. He's not like great. He's not some revelation, but he's like pretty good as Kang. Yeah. That's the only positive of of Ant Man. Like, yeah. and he's only cool as Kang is because that that like that's the first time we actually see him being Kang. Yeah. And we still haven't seen him be Kang since. And we then. never will. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Yeah. What have you been? What are y'all doing? Yeah. And we never will. That's the yeah. only time we we'll ever see him. It was supposed to introduce him as the villain, the new big bad, and then and then they show thirty eight thousand of them in the uh, post credits scene. Yeah, dressed as Egyptians. Because there's what nothing the fuck like are we doing. There's nothing that's going to make your villain feel important than having thirty eight thousand of them. Yeah, having a fucking Kang factory <clears throat> pumping out Kangs yeah. really makes him feel important, doesn't he? <laughs> Whatever factory they make Oliver's and get the fuck out. <laughs> Oh, I oh, forgot God. about that line. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, and then Modoc in Ant Man Three, like, how in God's name do you see that and go, "Looks good"? But what you're forgetting is, Carl, just don't be a dick. Yeah, that whole thing, fucking die, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. Holy sh! Like, dude. I mean. There's someone at Marvel like gets paid to yeah. watch things, and uh, like over oversee things, you know, make sure everything's going smoothly. As one Where the would. fuck was he when this was getting made? Guy was dozing, dude. Dude, like holy shit! Yeah. I mean, just look at the script. Like this could have all been fixed if you just read the script and said, "Oh, it's dog shit." Um, <laughs> <laughs> write something else. Uh, <laughs> you just look at it. And you go. <laughs> <Yeesh. Ooh. laughs> so we're this is the first draft right you're, you're gonna try <laughs> you, read, you read the script good night <laughs> god damn son <laughs> yeah, this, this pile of dogs this shit. could have all been prevented if you someone just proofread the script and said oh yeah this is stinky let's <laughs> not make this yeah let's I get think, a new script yeah i i think that with mario at least you have I mean, don't. I'm not praising Mario. I'm just saying, you better in, compa not. in comparison to Ant Man. Unless you want to get your ass beat, <laughs> you better not praise in Mario. In comparison to Ant Man, you at least have some cool animation visuals and some neat callbacks to the Mario games. And Quantumania. Treading on thin ice right now. <laughs> the Quantumania, you get Bill Murray, who I love, who was in it for no reason. And he also isn't funny in it. Yeah. Uh, you get bad jokes. Yep. Shitty visuals. Yep. And a fucking don't be a dick storyline. Yep. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> yep. I like. And they I, like actually fight the main villain of the movie for like two minutes, and then he like kind of dies and kind of doesn't. Yeah. Your big world. Nothing in, happened. Your world changing villain got beat in a fist fight by Ant Man by Paul Rudd. Yeah. Actor Paul Rudd. <clears throat> I left that movie and I felt like I should call the police. <laughs> <laughs> I <can't. laughs> There's no law against what happened. But, but it feels like there to, should be. Just someone needs to know about, <laughs> about it. Because <laughs> I got fucked in the ass, too. And I didn't want to be fucked in the ass. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> This is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass. <laughs> oh my god. I wanted to riot after Ant Man, dude. That was fucking I horrible. To call the police. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> That's a bad movie. <coughs> Holy shit. All right. Yeah, I fucking hate Ant Man, dude. Oh, uh, we've spent. Oh, yeah, I guess I never really talked about how much I hate Mario. Um, oh, yeah. Go on the spiel real fast. I don't. <sighs> I only have so much Dude. anger inside me I can release at one time. <laughs> Anytime I bring up Mario, Cash looks fucking sick to his <laughs> stomach. He looks exhausted every time someone says Mario. 
I understand like not liking Mario, but I've never seen a level of hate like this before. I mean, when you have a movie this fucking dog shit, it's not hard to fucking put some hatred into it. Um, okay, keep it. Keep. Let's try to think of something short and simple. Um, it's bad. Uh, Chris Pratt, horrible Mario casting. Don't know why they did that. Just cast an Italian guy. Um, or just cast anyone else. They they didn't do anything new. They just rinsed and recycled shit from the games, which some people defend and say, oh well, you know. It's an adaptation of the game, so that's okay. I don't believe in that. I think if you're making a movie, you should make a movie and not just copy and paste shit from the game because games work differently than movies. Well, they did kind of like... There was a maybe secret, somewhat homoerotic relationship between Mario and Luigi a little bit. I couldn't tell you because they were split up the whole time. I don't know. They're both like 30 and they sleep in the same room. Oh, you're just talking about the opening scene. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's another one of my problems, is Mario and Luigi are not together until the end of the movie. (laughs) They started together, Mario fucks off, (laughs) and then they see each other again at the end. And it's like, it's just a cameo, hey, do you get this reference? Hey, do you get this reference? Hey, do you get this reference? That's all the movie is. They do Do nothing interesting. It's not funny. It's not interesting. I, trust me, I like fun. I, I like observe and report. My favorite Christmas movies, Merry Christmas, Drake and Josh. Yeah. If the, anyone knows about fun, it's me. This isn't that. <laughs> this is far from that. This is the opposite of that. This is bad. This is bad news. And, uh, dude, it's fucking terrible. It, yeah. And it's also like, when you compare it to the other movies on the list, like, um, The Nun 2, that doesn't, they don't really have much to work with to make a good Nun movie. They don't really have much to work with for a a new Insidious movie. They don't really have much to work with with a new Exorcist movie. So it's like they're bad, but it's like there isn't too much to really do with it. But there's so many things you can do with the budget and resources they had to make a Mario movie. They could have done some really interesting things with it. And they did none of that. They did the most boring castings you could imagine. They did the most boring just generic recycled story from the games that they could possibly do and it's just a cameo reference fest and it's it is what is wrong with filmmaking today it is what is wrong with mo- the movie industry today <clears throat> all right <laughs> <laughs> comest film comest film now we're on to a fucking yeah awesome subject so yeah Bi- uh, this fucking, is the big kahuna burger yeah this is a fucking huge awesome time for movies yeah um making this list really made me hate people that say movies are bad nowadays or they don't make good movies anymore Dude, yeah that's that pisses me off more all than, that hit, tells more me when you say that you is that you don't watch movies yeah and it's just so like the only other thing you could say that would like it, you walk up to me and just say hey i'm a big dumb idiot that's all you did. just say that it's, instead because that's the equivalent yeah. of saying that it's just so fucking stupid it really bothers me oh they don't make them like they used to it's like I mean of course not they didn't in the time you're referencing like the 80s they didn't make them in the 80s like they did in the 30s yeah like of course like times have changed but we're still getting great shit today yeah so fucking deal with it yeah how about you show up for class one day how about you're gay. <laughs> How about that? All right. So, come as film. Uh, the nominations are Oppenheimer, Guardians no 3. No way. <laughs> Guardians 3, The Iron Claw, The Holdovers, and John Wick 4. John Wheezy. And the winner is, surprise, surprise, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Oppenheimer, guys. It's Oppenhizzle. Um. If that's a shock to you, buzz stop. off. Yeah, stop it. Make like a tree and get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. And I saw. I was trying to think of something to say for that, and I saw someone said, "Make like a bow and move." 
<laughs> but that makes sense, so it's not as funny. Yeah, the, make like a tree and get out of here. It's, it, it's that's funny because like he's a fucking idiot. Yeah, and he didn't. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Make like diarrhea and run was another one. Yeah, <laughs> you don't like that. I don't one? like it when it's like when they're trying to actually make a real pun. Oh, uh, gotcha. Yeah, it's funny when they're stupid. <clears throat> but yeah, it's Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer is a perfect movie. Yeah. And, um, like it, I think in my Nolan ranking, I originally had like Inception, Interstellar, Oppenheimer. And I think Oppenheimer is number two. Mm. Um, I think it leapfrogged over Interstellar. Oh, wow. It's incredible. You know what's crazy is I think Oppenheimer is also perfect. And it's one of the best movies I've ever seen. And it's still number six in my Nolan rankings. That's crazy. Because not that he's made that's five movies. That's just a testament to Nolan. That's what I'm saying is not like he just has, he's my favorite director. So he already has so many movies that I'm emotionally attached to. Yeah. I mean, the Dark Knight trilogy is one of my favorite things that exists on earth. Yeah. Not movies. Things. One of my favorite things. So that's obviously ahead. All three of those are ahead of Oppenheimer and uh, Interstellar Inception. What's the other one I have ahead of it? And then you have something goofy ahead of it, like uh... maybe no, it's at five. No, <clears throat> never mind, it's at five. Oh, okay. It's the Dark Knight trilogy, Inception, Interstellar. I have ahead of it because he's just a fucking dog. But Nolan is, dude. He's him for real. He's hit after fucking hit and hit and hit. Like he's just if you look at the movies though. he's made, like God damn, dude, <laughs> take a break. Yeah, calm down. Yeah, and some people are like hesitant to crown him as like one of the best filmmakers because he's like sort of a blockbuster guy now, but when you're making fucking incredible blockbusters, yeah. why would you stop? And it's like, he's like, some of them are blockbusters. Yeah. Like Tenet, but I mean, Oppenheimer shouldn't be a blockbuster. It just is because it's so fucking good. Yeah. It's a biopic. That's not a blockbuster. Yeah. It ended up being cause he's fucking wicked. And I'm sorry, but I don't give a fuck if it's a blockbuster. Yeah. Is it good? Is all of his movies good? Exactly. There we go. That's what I. That's care all about. I need to say. Yeah. I <laughs> Is every single fucking movie good? Yeah. For sure. So yeah. he's incredible. Yeah. He's in. He's like. If I went through and watched all of Christopher Nolan's movies, I would probably die, of dehydration, from coming so much. Yeah. If I watched all the Nolan movies, in a row. You could cut my sack open, and there'd be no cum left. <laughs> yeah. It'd be, be all over the wall. I'd be sterile. Yeah. Like, I couldn't produce anymore. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be dumped out. She married you, not your dead jizz. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's from The Watch. You yep. guys should watch it. It's it's funny. It's a funny film. Um, yeah, Oppenheimer's number one movie of the year. I feel like it's everyone's number one movie of the year, but maybe they're silly and maybe not so. But it should be. Yeah. I mean, I don't... I love... John Wick 4, but, like, I think it's a little insane to say that it's a better movie than Oppenheimer. Yeah, I don't think I it think is. it's clearly, it's clearly Oppenheimer. Yeah. Give Nolan his fucking prize. Stop trying to dick us out. Dude, I'm, I'm, like, really excited for the Oscars this year, which I'm normally not, but it's because, like... Christopher Nolan's never won a Best Director Oscar, and I think he has, like, a real shot at it this year. It feels like almost the obvious choice, and I just hope they don't pull some fucking bullshit. I don't, like, it's, <clears throat> I'm not excited for the Oscars, like, for me. I'm excited about it for other people yeah. that I, that I support, and Christopher Nolan's my favorite director, and... I would fucking love, like, you know how happy I was when Dune swept the Oscars? Oh. And they had, like, God. fucking yeah. six wins? You saw Denise's cute little face? Yeah. Yeah. 
saw his cute face fucking six times. <laughs> yeah. He's like, like, you guys got to stop calling me up here. Dude, like, Oppenheimer is going to get nominated for almost every category. Yeah. And I just really, really want him to win Best Director. Yeah. Kill shot, just, Kill shot might win Best Actor, dude. Oh, yeah. I, I'm hoping so. Yeah. I mean, I don't really know who they would pick if it's not him. He's going to go up there and be like, this is great, guys. Thank you. <laughs> That's I was trying to do Irish. But I, you just can't do it. Sounded like Conor McGregor. Yeah. Nate can only count to five. This award, <laughs> I wouldn't wipe my ass with it. <laughs> I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely no one. The double champ does what the fuck he wants. I am become death. <laughs> Destroyer of words. <laughs> Break out the red panties. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. all right. I think that's all we got for the Scoopies. Yep. I hope everyone enjoyed. Um, yep. Let us know if you did. And if you didn't, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry Your about opinion it. isn't important to us <laughs> yeah. if you didn't like it. We will only praise. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Dude, but no, you if you so have if you have criticism, uh, let us know. Yeah. Why are you so fucking muscular? Right Stop now, it! What are you doing? Stop being weird. You're being crazy, dude. I'm just standing here. You're standing there like a like fucking with boulders for shoulders, dude. God right. bless. You want to fucking calm down, dude? Cash is ripped. I want the I want the people to know. No. Yeah. No, no, no. If by ripped you mean tubby. I think you're about to fucking start singing Push. I mean, that's what you're I'm telling saying. me I look like Ryan Gosling. Uh, I'm going to have a hard time <laughs> not taking that very well. Because <laughs> that's pretty pretty cool. Pretty pretty close. I get a little too many um, Ed Sheerans in real life <laughs> to deny a Ryan Gosling compliment. Yeah, dude. I don't know why people don't think that's an insult to tell me I look like Ed Sheeran. Because when I, I say, like, oh, that's not good. You mean like, that ugly guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'll they'll say, you know, you kind of look like Ed Sheeran. And I'll be like, that's pretty fucked up to say. And then they're like, no, but he's like a famous singer. Like, that's not a bad thing. And yeah. I was like, well, he's not famous because he's hot. Yeah. He's famous because he can sing. He's the, His looks are the worst thing about him. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino's a famous director. Yeah, it's like saying you look like Quentin Tarantino. Yourself. It's like everyone knows he's fucking hideous. <laughs> everyone knows he looks like my <laughs> asshole. <laughs> He looks like the bottom of my shoe. <laughs> it's just some fucked up shit to yeah, say. Dude. Like, if I tell someone they look like fucking Michael B. Jordan, you can know instantly that is a compliment. Yeah. That is a good thing. He's one of the most attractive guys on the planet. Yeah. Ed Sheeran is not that. I don't think dude, he was in an, a shot of Game of Thrones <laughs> with like ugly fucks on yeah. the show, like people with missing eyes. And I saw him, and I was like, "Yeesh!" Like, <laughs> if we oh. were uh, if we were voting for a handsomest guy, he wouldn't get my vote, dude. He's but no, you look like you do beach. That's what you look like. I'll beat you off right now. <laughs> All right. All right. This concludes the annual Scoopies. The first annual Scoopies. On there will be many more. On the film school. Film school.